Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing on this fine, beautiful day in Central Florida? Yeah. It's October 5th, 2022. And it's time to start working on the Ninja Warrior number 4 guitar, the diamond plate. And I have all the parts. I have the diamond plate material that's going to go on the top. Just to recap real quick, uh, you know, this is going to be a stop and tail piece, single pickup, uh, single volume and a tone. And it's going to be black, um, other than the chrome diamond plate material on the body and on the front of the headstock. Just the front of the body. <laughs> it's going to be screwed in. It's going to look really cool. And uh, yeah, it's going to be active pickup. Uh, EMG active 81 in the bridge position. And it's going to look pretty cool. So I remember I cut these pieces a while ago. These are three half inch pieces of plywood, so I figure it'd be a little bit lighter because the diamond plate material is going to weigh a little bit. So my first step today, I got my circular sander out and we're going to make the edges really nice. And then we're going to get the Dremel tool out and we're going to put a round edge just on the back, not on the front. In the front we're just going to sandpaper because that's going to have the diamond plate material actually on top of it. So looking forward to getting this going. So. All right. Oh, and the neck is going to be a 22 fret. Originally, I wanted a 24 fret reverse headstock, Jackson style uh, headstock reverse. Um, like I said, uh, 22 fret, and it's going to have a diamond inlays, which is going to be really cool, like the the tread on the uh, diamond plate. So that's going to be really cool, and that's going to be black. I'm going to paint the entire neck black, you know, not the front of the headstock. It's going to stay rosewood, and. Uh, paint it black and then put a clear coat over everything the black parts anyway not the chrome so all right so first step let me get the uh, circular sander out and start to sand every all these edges make them smooth and perfect and we'll see you when I get that done we'll see you in a sec all right got all my lines really straight it's looking pretty good looking pretty awesome all right so the next step is gonna get my Dremel tool out and put a bevel on the back and I'll be right back all right, got a nice round edge on the back. Looking pretty good. Had my Dremel tool with the Dremel bit. And it feels awesome. In the front, I just did a sandpaper, just a basic sand, just to kind of round off the sharpness, but nothing extreme. Because the diamond, like I said, the diamond plate, I may say things over and over again, but just kind of getting it over, you know, make sure and conferring in my head what I want to do. So got the diamond plate material going on top. All right, so... Next thing you do is get the neck out and draw out where everything, where I want the neck to go and uh, position all that. So we'll be right back. All right, I got my layout in general where everything's gonna go. Minus a few pits that aren't necessary at this time. And uh, yeah, I think it's gonna, it's gonna be really cool, especially with the diamond plate material. And I'm not gonna, you know, the pickup ring is gonna be the diamond plate material, so and you have to get that exactly accurate because as you know the pickup will come through the diamond plate and the diamond plate will actually be the mounting br you know bracket for that so pretty cool but yeah i think it looks uh looks pretty killer i like to go with a volume and a tone and i'll go chrome like that so i could go with a, a neck pickup and then a selector switch somewhere but I, you know i think i'm going to stick it simple and just go with the one pickup because you know I don't use the bridge pickup that much or the uh, the neck pickup too often. It would look cool, but yeah, for this particular build, I think it's because his body's so skinny and so small. I think it'll look awesome. So, so. All right, so next uh, step is going to be to cut out exactly where the neck pocket's going to go and mark the information on the single. So, yeah, and I think it's a cool body as far as position is concerned. Got the screws. I got three layers separated. I got just the top two layers. I got my uh, neck pocket cut out or traced out where I want to put it, and the bridge marked out where it's gonna go. So let me go ahead and get the scroll saw back up here, and then cut out for the neck pocket, and we'll be right back. All right, cut out for the neck pocket. All right, let me fit the neck in there and see how we did. We'll be right back. All right, perfect neck cut out. Looks pretty good. Good along the edges. Yeah, we're good to go. All right, that's awesome. All right, so as usual, we're going to get my neck tendon piece, and we're going to get like one and a half layers or so. Seems like this is going to be a stop and tail piece bridge. 
doesn't have to be as low as like a Floyd Rose. So we might actually get away with doing two layers. We'll see how it goes though. I'll cut that out. I'll be right back. All right, cut out for my pocket piece. And I got the neck in there and it looked pretty good. So uh, let me glue these together. I'll glue the neck in there, or glue the, uh, the tendon in the second layer. And we'll be right back. All right, got my neck tendon glued in and it looking pretty good. Uh, and actually I'm gonna glue the top layer to the middle layer because there's no need no reason for them not to be glued together at this point. So let's glue them together and I'll be right back. All right, got my top two pieces glued together, got the neck tendon glued in place, and then I temporarily screwed all three uh, layers back together. So we're looking good. I guess the next step is probably gonna be to actually, uh, because this is kind of crucial where the neck is gonna sit, I'm gonna go ahead and install the neck. So I'm gonna go ahead and screw the neck into the body, even though it's not completely, uh, the two layers are still separated. I'm just gonna glue the neck in there and that way I can draw exactly where the bridge is gonna go. So, all right, we'll see in a little bit. All right, actually before I screw the neck in, I wanted to make sure that we had the right height and I'm using this uh, back cover plate just as a stepping stool for more or less for the bridge. And it does fit right in there perfect and see so, yeah, I'm deciding whether I should have the posts go through the diamond plate to the wood or rest on top but see if they rest on top then I don't have to bore out for where the, there might be a diamond because you know that diamonds protrude a little bit but I'm, I'm probably the way it's set up now and the way the neck the height is uh, that'll be perfect because you figure the uh, diamond plate material is probably gonna go up to that line where I marked right there that's gonna add that extra thickness and with the bridge the way it is, when I stretch the line across, I can't do that one hand, obviously, but it was like right in the ballpark of where it should be. So that's like actually perfect. So that'll give room to go up and down. And if I need be, I could always shim the neck just slightly, tilt the neck just slightly back if I have to, which I don't think I will because I think that's perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and drill in the neck and I'll be right back. All right, got the neck installed and it's looking pretty killer. Yeah, that's different. No Floyd Rose this time. Just going to have a stop and tailpiece bridge. That's going to be actually pretty simplistic compared to the other ones. But yeah, it's going to be really cool with that diamond plate material. I just wanted to show you the back. Looks pretty killer. All right. So the next step is to draw out my lines and get the bridge exactly where I need to be. And then... Um, figure out everything really good as far as the uh, the height and everything like that so let me get the bridge going let me make sure my lines I drew I probably have to redraw them but I'll see you in a sec all right got my lines drawn I want to go with the center of this one and I kind of judged on other guitars that I have with stop and tailpiece and roughly this is about the distance which looks good with the body and everything like that that'll look perfect so let me go ahead and mark my holes and then get my appropriate drill bit and install the bridge parts and we'll see in a little bit. All right, got my circles marked. And now I got the appropriate drill bit and I'll probably have to Dremel to widen them just a little bit and I got it marked for the correct depth. And let's get some holes drilled, <laughs> fingers crossed on this one. All right, see in a little bit. All right, successfully installed the bridge. I'm gonna do a string test to make sure all my measurements and all my lines are correct. All right, we'll see in a sec. All right, successful installation of the stop and tailpiece bridge. Now I got to figure out where the pickup cavity is going to go and the pedometer and the, the volume and the tone knob. So let me figure that out real quick and I'll be right back. All right, drawing out where the pickup's going to go. It's going to go right in that spot. And I'm going to have to cut the, uh, the metal and I have to be very precise with that, with the metal. So I want to give a little extra room in there that way when I cut the whole opening for the metal that it would actually fit and be in the proper position. That's going to be very crucial. So let me figure out where the volume and the tone is going to go and let me drill through and then we'll disassemble that and then we'll cut the pickup opening. All right, we'll see in a little bit. All right, figured out where I want to put the volume and the tone. Right there is going to be their positions. So let me go ahead and drill through all three pieces for the volume and the tone and then we're going to take everything apart and we're going to cut out the pickup cavity. All right, we'll see in a little bit. I got my three pieces separated. I got some pilot holes drilled. I got my scroll saw out. All right, we cut out for the pickup and we will be right back. 
All right, successful. Oh, cut out for the uh, pickup opening. And let me get out my pickup and make sure. And I tried to cut it a little bit, a little bit big, yeah. So we got plenty of room because, uh, like I said, the metal is going to be the actual holding of the pickup. So I always want plenty of room in there. So there we go. All right. So pickup is cut out. So I guess the next step is going to be to figure out when I put the input jack, probably in the same spot, use the, uh, the same style, the same uh, Strat style, Jackson style input jack on here. And then we can flip it over and start figuring for the wiring. So yeah, pretty cool. All right, and we will see you in a little bit. All right, pretty straightforward wiring. Got the volume knob, the tone knob, um, channel to the bridge post for the ground and then for the input jack. So I got my Dremel tool out and let me go ahead and start the Dremel for the wiring and it'll be pretty cool. So, and then I'm gonna have to figure, I did, uh, I am gonna go with a short uh, input jack or not input jack, but battery compartment. I do have a, it's in the other room. Oh, I brought it. Uh, I've got a shallow uh, battery compartment and I'm going to have an account for that too. So we'll get that going. But let me go ahead and make sure all my pedometers are big enough. And then we'll start the wiring process. And I'm going to have to go deeper with the the pedometers and everything like that. Because, you know, it's gotta, i got to count for that eighth of an inch for the metal plate material. So, hmm. Uh, might just go, uh, well, I don't know. I might have to just go ahead and go through... And just, uh, now nah, we'll see how it goes. I still bore, leave a little. All right, we'll see in a little bit. All right, another quick update. Trying to figure out where the 9-volt battery compartment's going to be. Somewhere that's going to look cool. Uh, the bridge is right here on the other side. So I don't want to get anywhere near that. Um, and there's not enough room over here. So I'm thinking I might put it over here. Or a place that looks kind of cool and it's easy to access. Like boom, boom, change the battery. And then route it out to the right into the cavity. So yeah, and I installed the input jack, and that looks pretty killer. Let me show you that. Yeah, and I, I had it a little bit to the left there. You see, because yeah, I got to count for the uh, the diamond plate material that's going to go there. So I wanted to make sure it was kind of centered. So yeah, it's pretty cool. And then I got it all wired up. Everything, all the wiring complete. Access panel, I drew this circle here, so it's gonna be a circle. And like I said, I'm probably thinking, I'm leaning towards putting the input, um, nine volt battery input right here. And uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna countersink any. Yeah, I guess I could countersink. Yeah, well, I guess it really doesn't matter because it's gonna be black, so it's not gonna be very noticeable. And I'm gonna have black pick guard material for the access panel, the actual, I might go square. Well, yeah, I go round and then keep the battery square. I guess it really doesn't matter. So, all right, let me figure that out. And then I'll drill this opening and then figure out where that's going to go. All right, we'll see in a little bit. Uh, all right, installed, successfully installed the 9-volt battery compartment. And then I routed out the, uh, the channel. And I pulled the wires through, so we're good to go there. Uh, it's getting kind of it's getting kind of late. The sun's getting ready to set, so I don't know how much more I'm gonna get done today. But it got done quite a bit, and I'm not gonna be able to glue it, the pieces together after I finish everything because I still got to do the front, uh, the uh, diamond plate material. And once I get that completely set and perfect, then we'll finally get to glue everything together. But as far as uh, got that pretty good, um, and I guess the next step would be to. Uh, make a access panel plate and seeing how i'm not going to countersink uh the 9 volt battery compartment plate i probably won't countersink the uh the access panel plate either so make things a little bit easier um uh, and it'll look more you know it'll this won't be countersunk that won't be countersunk and that won't be so it'll all match pretty good so all right it's going pretty good so got to figure out I guess we can uh, go ahead and make the uh, access panel cover plate. Seeing how we're not going to countersink it, it should be fairly simple. So, all right, let me uh, get some material and I'll be right back and then we'll figure that out. All right, came up with the shape for the access panel plate that I want. 
I went with the square, went basically the same shape as the 9 volt battery compartment just to kind of match everything. And the, uh, you know, the uh, neck plate is square also, so I think that's going to be pretty killer. So that's how it's going to look. The access panel plate, 9 volt battery compartment. I got me some uh, three ply. I wonder if I have any two oh, single ply. I think I do have a brand new sheet of single ply uh, pickguard material because I don't want to go with the white in the center. So let me go fish that out. So uh, see if I got some uh, small enough piece for just one ply. All right, and let me go get that and we'll be back in a second. All right, and created a back axe panel plate. Pretty cool. On my counter sunk the drill holes. And I got my screws, and I'm going to go install it on the body, and I'll be right back. Alright, got the back access panel installed. And since how this is chrome black kind of, uh, you know, kind of theme, chrome and black, I might elect to go with chrome screws, but for just for, for setting it up for the first, you know, for getting it installed initially, uh, I just went with the black screws, but I might go with chrome screws, because that way it kind of suits the whole thing but i guess it really doesn't matter it's going to be gloss black so it's really not going to be that visible per se and I'm contemplating countersinking eh, i mean it's really not necessary yeah i i would normally countersink but that extra step is really not going to make any difference because it's black body so i mean it's going to be gloss black so i don't think it really make any kind of difference at all and these two parts aren't going to be recessed so all right, so let me figure out. I got a big old mess to clean up. Uh, getting ready to lose daylight here shortly. So got a lot done today. Uh, figure out if there's anything more we can do. But uh, we, the next step will be to actually start cutting the uh, diamond plate material. And that's going to take a while. So I want to start a fresh day with that. So all right, so if I don't have any more updates for today, this will probably be the last update for today on the Ninja Warrior diamond plate number four. Four Ninja Warrior number four guitar. Plate. So it's gonna be really cool. So alright, hope everybody's having a good night and <laughs> got a big old mess to clean up. So all right, we'll see you. Good morning everybody. It is October 6th, 2022. It's probably about 8.30 and 9 o'clock in the morning, and it's time to continue work on the Ninja Warrior number four diamond plate electric guitar build. And uh Today we're going to cut the face of the diamond plate and uh, cut out all the parts. Uh, cut out for the bridge, for the pickup, for the pedometers, and actually install it on the top of the body of the guitar. Um, here's the material right there in that little container. And I've thought about this. Uh, I've done a diamond plate guitar before, but I didn't have the sophistication of tools that I have now. Also, I wasn't... I was kind of green in my guitar making in them days, so it didn't turn out that great. I mean, it turned out good, but I want to make this as perfect as possible, and there's only one shot you get at this. I mean, I could buy these, I think it's a 28 by 30 piece of diamond plate material that's 0 .063 thick, and it costs about 50 bucks. Uh, so if I mess it up, I could always order some more, but that would not, you know, <laughs> that'd be... That's not the ideal situation, so I want to try to get it right the first time. And like I've said, I've thought about ways of doing this. And uh, I thought about maybe putting the top piece on the, the, you know, and tracing it out or whatever, a black, and doing it a different ways, uh, tracing it out the other way, and then cutting it. But I think the best way to cut the body shape itself is going to be with the, uh, the uh, scroll saw. And I've got a really good metal bit for that. Um, so what I think I'm going to do is I've got me some uh, thicker paper. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to make me a paper cutout of just the body, the, the whole shape itself. And then I'm going to trace that on the, the pickguard material or the, uh, the diamond plate material. Then cut that and then install that with screws. And then take the, you see when I, when I glued the second pieces, you know, I want to make the edges perfect again. So what I'll do is I'll get the round saw or the round sander, the orbital sander. And then with the diamond plate material screwed in and attached to the top of the guitar, I'll go ahead and take the, uh, the round, uh, sander and sand all the edges exactly perfect. And so that'll make everything exactly good. And then that'll work out well. That's the thought anyway. And then after I'm done with that, then I can take the 
you know, the guitar, the two parts apart with the uh, diamond plate still attached to the front of the guitar and then trace out from the back side or I can do it on the front with for the uh, the, the uh, pickup cavity on the pedometer openings um, and you see how I, I countersunk the to bring it just a little bit lower on the body I countersunk the uh, the stop and tailpiece which is really kind of cool that's why I added some body filler there so all right so let me make that by paper cutout of this shape uh, and we'll be right back all right I'll see you in a little bit all right got the exact shape traced out on my uh, paper cut out and now I'm gonna get my scissors and carefully cut it out and I'll be right back all right got my paper cut out perfectly cut out <laughs> my paper cut out cut out it's a paper cut out anyway uh all right, so that's the perfect shape, and it does hang over just a you know just a sninge on all the edges, so that's perfect. So when I go to sand everything, all right. So there's different ways we can accomplish this. Definitely gonna use the scroll saw, but um, I think if I trace, I'll have to look because I'm thinking the diamond plate material. You know, the each diamonds that are, it'll it, it they puff up just a you know just a sminge. And I think if I put the template on top and traced it out that way on the top, that the sminge would blur the line a little bit and it might be off a little bit. So I think what I'll do is I'll flip over the template and then I'll cut from the back side of the material. And when I get it outside and I show you, the, uh, the diamond plate material actually has this uh, fairly thick uh, plastic... It's like this white plastic coating on it. I'll show you. It's not a coating, but it's just a film. Um, and I think that'll protect it from moving around on the scroll saw, hopefully. Because I don't want to scratch the surface of the diamond plate because it looks like it's like a mirror finish. It looks pretty awesome. I mean, I wanted to polish it at all. And it looks like stainless steel. So it's just, it's aluminum, but it's just amazing. So, all right. So I guess the operation is to move everything outside and... <laughs> Fingers crossed everything goes well, but all right, so I'll see you when I get everything moved outside. All right. All right, a beautiful sunny day here in Central Florida. The sun is out, not a cloud in the sky. I'm glad I put this umbrella up a while ago. Okay, we're set up outside. Got my scroll saw, got the, uh, the metal. I'll get that out and I'll show you how cool that is. And then I got all my, I'm probably gonna do the back side like I was mentioning. All right, let me get the uh, metal out and then let's see how it goes. All right, here we go. I got the diamond plate material out and you can see this uh, white plastic film that's over it. But underneath, as you can see, it is brilliant and beautiful. And you can see these protrude quite a bit. Let me show you the thickness of this. Yeah, so it's really not, not extremely thick, but it's, it's not thin, it's pretty girthy. So uh, I'm trying to think of the best way, like I was saying, I think the best way, and I wanna orient the uh the crosses you know what i mean like uh like angled you know what i mean so the headstock of the look at the guitar body this way and then have it perfectly angled so that's going to be a combination it looks like they lined it up the, the way they cut this piece which is i'm glad they did that so that way i can make sure that the the orientation of the diamonds themselves so I think like I suggested, oh, and you can see the diamonds through the back too, so that help. that's helpful. All right, so what I'm gonna do, let me get my template, and I'm gonna make sure I trace it out the correct way, cause, ooh, it's gonna be, let's see. Yeah, whew. As far as the orientations of the diamonds themselves, I gotta get that just right, so looks like it's gonna be like right on the edge, right there, yeah, wow. Let me do it further up there. That way I can have some ex well, have some extra material because I'm going to need to do the headstock of this, uh, this plating too. So, all right, so let me get this orientated and then maybe get some drawing going. And then it uh, shouldn't be that bad cutting it on this. This, this blade's pretty good. And this, uh, this will be pretty girthy. All right, so let me figure this out and I'll be right back. All right, got my shape uh, taped to the, the metal and it's not heating up. I thought it would probably heat up to the sun, but... Uh, yeah, and I think I got the, uh, the crying, the hatch, you know, anyway, the, the orientated the right way. So I'm going to get my Sharpie. Sharpie should be good for this. 
and carefully mark out the lines and then try to cut on the outside of the lines that way it's a little bit over and when I attach it. Alright, let me get this step done. <laughs> Ooh, it's a little bit nervous because so you know this like I said is a $50 piece of metal. So let me get this uh, marked out. I'll be right back. Alright, got the shape traced out on the metal. <laughs> now it's the hard part. Ah, the tense part. Let me try to perfectly cut this out on the uh, this girl saw here. So fingers crossed on this one. Alright, this is going to be tricky. I will see you in a little bit. Alright, just a quick update. Uh, I got a little bit of a cut done and it was uh, kind of like the, the diamonds were kind of like bumping on certain bits like little corners and creases in here so I didn't want to have it all scratched up so I put some tape on there and I put some tape on the base. Hopefully this will help so uh, we'll see how it goes and go back to cut and I did get some cut. And I, I was trying to just see how this was cutting and uh, I cut like that right there so. <laughs> So let me go back. We'll see you in a little bit. All right, just quick update. Taking a break. <laughs> We're getting there. And the tape definitely worked. Uh, it's not scuffing up the front anymore at all. There might be a spot or two that it did scuff. Then maybe I could buff those out. Just real small spots. But uh, whew, that's a kind of a strain on your back. And attention to the detail with the dogs barking and the squirrels and all the critters in the world uh, distracting you you just got to really laser focus on that line and just beyond the line just whew. and i love my dogs but i'm walking back and forth it's just whew. all right continue on with this and we'll be back all right we got a successful cutout of the shape and it turned out well and as you can see it didn't nick up the finish at all just those Two little liner spots in front. Woo, learning experience. Next time if I do something like this. And it looks like all the the cross hatches are definitely going the correct orientation. So uh yeah, let's apply it to the body and see how we fared. Okay, let's see. Alright, looks like we did very well. <laughs> the shape is dead on and it's perfect. And it's hanging over just a hair on all the sides, which is perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. All right, now so now uh, I guess the next step, the tricky part, is going to be to cut out the uh, neck plate or the neck opening, and then once I get that perfect, then we're gonna put some screws. We're gonna peel off all the, uh, we're gonna show its glimmer and all its glory, and then we're gonna figure out where I want to put the uh, the screws, because I'm gonna space them a certain way. Probably have four or five inches, or staggered a certain way to where they're there but they're not they're not there you know what I mean kind of not overly do the screws kind of like so anyway we'll get to that point so let's uh, figure out the uh, the the pocket for the uh, neck pocket all right let's see in a bit okay the way I'm gonna do this actually I got the template template paper cut out on the body itself and I got it perfectly positioned then I took my finger and simply just rubbed and it made the impression of where the uh, the pick or uh, the uh, neck pocket is and then I'll get my scissors and then cut that and then transfer it over to the metal and then cut it out so fingers crossed on this one hopefully this goes well this is crucial because I want it to be perfect as possible you know me so all right we'll see you in a sec all right got the shape cut out on the template and then I transferred it over to the actual metal and so now we're gonna cut this out and it did overhang as you can see with the template with the actual metal it's awesome it's it's uh there's like a maybe a half a centimeter half a centimeter very fine uh fatter than the actual template i can imagine the template was just a little bit fatter than the actual body so when we go to apply this and then we lock it in we get all three pieces together again how are we gonna do that hmm think about that because how are we gonna get all three pieces hmm might have to do that later step hmm might have to actually do the sanding once the body is complete um, but see I kind of wanted huh that's gonna be kind of tricky huh got to figure out a way to uh, I'm gonna have to cut out these openings and everything has to be perfect and everything <laughs> all right let me figure that out because uh there's no way to attach the screws because the screws are here 
and I definitely don't want to put the screws through the middle. Uh -huh. Okay, I don't the phone just cut out. It had low battery, so let me put the phone on the charger and let me figure this out and I'll be back. Yeah, all right, perfectly. I got my neck plate cut out pretty cool. All right, so now I'm going to tear off all the uh the uh the tape and the plastic and we're going to see the the glimmer shine of the the diamond plate and I think I can put that back on when if I need to. And uh we're going to actually try to attach it to the front. And then uh, I'm going to get all three layers of the body together before the circular orbital sander just by flipping it over and putting the screws in from the back. And I think that'll be fine as long as they're countersunk in there. They'll be good so they won't snag anything on the circular sander. But anyway, let me get this off and we'll see in one sec. Are you ready for it? You ready to see it? You ready? Ready? Bam! Wow! <laughs> that is just stunning. That looks amazing. Wow. I love that. I'm lucky I, I stumbled upon that, that person that was selling this product. Wow, that is just, it's a remnant. So it's just, it's just awesome. That's masterful. Look at that. Okay, so let me uh, get it set in place. And then we got to start figuring out where we're going to put some screws. Um, so let me um, put a magic, uh, use a Sharpie because you can erase Sharpie. And where I can plot some uh, screw holes and then we'll see in a little bit. I got first uh, draft of where I'm going to put the the screws, little black dots there. But think of it is I'm going to set two that I know are in the right spot because I don't want the it to vary from the edge. I want it to be pretty consistent. And when I actually get the uh, orbital sander out, it's going to shave off a little bit in certain areas a little bit more than others. So then I'll actually lock in where the rest of the screws, but these are the general locations of the screws. But you know what I mean? Ones that I know are, are where they are on the edge. And then we'll do that. So let me get my, figure out a, a few good holes here. That way I can lock it in, lock in the diamond plate on the body itself. And then we can flip it over and attach the bottom layer and then we can get the circular sander out and then we can sand it and make it look perfect. All right, we'll see you next time. All right, here's the plan as it stands. Okay, this is gonna be for the actual metal. It's the same size as the screw. Well, maybe I might get a bigger one. Let's see if this one will work. I'll try a hole with this first. Um, and then this will be the actual screwing, the pre-drilling for the screw itself. These are the screws I'm going to use. They uh, ordered them specifically for this, and I thought they looked pretty cool. And then each hole is going to get a countersink ream, so that way it'll blend in. So this will be on the top, and then the screws, theoretically, will be countersunk. So, all right, so let me find, let me get a scrap piece of metal and see if that's the right, right uh, bits that I need. All right, see a little bit. All right, got my test piece out, and I first drilled with the fatter bit through the metal. Then I put a countersink on it with this bit right here. So let's see if I can do this one handed. The screw fits in there beautifully flush. Yeah, see that? That's perfect. That's what I want. So, all right, so let me find a few choice places that I know for sure the depth. And I gotta figure an exact depth of how I want the body. It's The body's gonna change slightly too because when I put the uh, the bondo the wood grain filler it's going to fatten it up a little bit and that's fine because you normally the uh the body on these guitars just a little bit bigger than the diamond plate the diamond plate's a little inset so that'll be perfect so all right fingers crossed me find some holes and <laughs> we'll see in a little bit all right got the first screw mounted and it looks perfect all right so let me get a few more in here and I'm trying to measure for the depth, correct depth from the side because it overhangs the, you know, the lip when I get the sander out. So, all right, we'll see in a little bit. All right, another quick update. I've got enough screws in there just now where I think I can, uh, yeah, I might put one there just in case. Yeah, I think I'll put one there first. But then the next step is gonna be to flip it over and then screw all three pieces together and then get out the orbital sander, but we'll be right back. All right, got the all three layers temporarily attached again. And I got the metal plate on the front, as you see. 
And I wanted to show you the lip of how much it hangs off and I did it on purpose. So that way when I sand, I get the orbital sander out, I'm gonna make all these flush with the body and then straighten the body lines as well. So it's gonna be really killer. All right, so let me get out the, and it doesn't, it's not that heavy. I mean, it's heavy enough so there's not gonna be any uh, neck dive. Because usually a neck dive happens when the body's so light and the neck's actually heavier in, a, in position of the straps, of strap buttons, of course. But, uh, yeah, all right, so let me get the orbital sander out. <laughs> we'll see in a little bit. All right, got the orbital sander out. And we're going to get the edges right to the body and make the edges on the body nice and smooth. All right, we'll start with the smaller bit first and see how that goes and see how it fares on the metal itself. All right, and we got a fresh, fresh tube there. All right, we'll see in a little bit. Alright, after some time and some major convincing, all the lines are good and perfect. Let me show you. Yeah. See all the uh, metal is flush to the wood. And it's looking and feeling good. Wow. Now probably have to get some sandpaper on the edges here just to knock off that little sharpness. But Alright, so we are good to go as far as that's concerned. Alright, now uh, I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to... It's uh, hanging just a little bit here, and I don't want it to bind on the neck. So let me get the Dremel tool out and just carefully etch this back to where the uh, the fret or the uh, the neck pocket is. All right, we'll see in a little bit. Actually, before I start working on the neck pocket, let me go ahead and get all the rest of these screws in there. I only put like half of them in there because I wanted to make sure everything was good to go first. And I think we are good to go. So let me put the rest of these screws in there, same way I did this one. So, all right, we'll see in a little bit. Alrighty then, got all the screws installed, and it's looking pretty awesome. And when I'm all done, I got to this really good uh, metal polish that I'll polish this and make it brilliant, of course. Just wanted to show you all the screws. Counter sunk and looking good. All right, and let me show you a little bit. I just wanted to get this a little bit closer. Just this is right here is good, but just this little edge right here and a little here. I'll just get the Dremel out, and I'll slowly and carefully knock that out so it looks so it's flush, so the neck fits perfect. So, and then we'll start working on cutting out the holes for the bridge, the pickup uh, cavity, and the pedometer, the volume, and the tone, and that'll be it as far as that the body then we can start gluing everything together and start working on the body itself so all right so ring. Ah. okay i don't know how much was said because this battery's dying put this on a charger and we'll see in a little bit but yeah hopefully i everything i just said i hope you heard all right we'll see in a little bit all right another quick update i got the pocket cut awesomely all right so we're good all right, next part's gonna be kind of tricky part. I'm gonna take apart the upper level and the bottom level, and we're gonna try to figure out the uh, best way to cut out the uh, bridge post, uh, the uh, pickup. Remember, the pickup is just gonna be the square pickup, not the actual nibs. And then the openings for those would be simple. Uh, so, all right, <laughs> wish me luck. We'll see you in a little bit. All right, got three pieces apart. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill a hole in the center of the pedometer, in the center of all four for the bridge and then we'll um, when I flip it over then I'll get the uh, Dremel and then I'll bore around and then I'll get the uh, inserts and then I'll make that perfect that's going to be fairly easy the tricky part is going to be to cut out for the uh, access or for the uh, the pickup so I'll figure that out but let me get working on this and then I'll catch up with you when I get a little done all right see a little bit all right and a quick update I've got the six holes drilled and already got the pedometers big enough, so we're good to go. That's gonna be awesome. Now I'm gonna work on boring out the uh, the bridge post. All right, we'll see you in a little while. All right, got the initial holes drilled out, and it's looking pretty good. It fits. Now what I'll do is I'll take the, the, the layer off, and then I'll actually bore out some more to where it's countersunk below the metal, so I'll show you that step in a sec. I'll be right back. Okay. All right, took all the screws out. Now I got, now let me show you. Okay, so I'll go on the other side. Now let me show you exactly what I mean. Um, see how I countersunk these just for depth? And they're actually, the, the lip is below the line. 
Okay, so what I did on the uh, initial drilling out of the holes is I just drilled the opening. Now see how it's just like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it over, I'm gonna place this in there, and then I'm gonna trace around with a really sharp uh, paint pen and it's going to show me the edges of it and then I'll bore that out to those lines and that should be able to where when this is back on the guitar it'll go through there all the way to the body do you understand okay I mean I'll do a few and then I'll show you all right you see where I I put the uh, the piece back in there and I traced around so this is how much extra that fit that I'll be able to fit through it so I'm gonna go ahead and bore it out individually and then be checking it constantly with the body making sure it's right all right we'll see in a little bit all right got one board out extra let me show you the difference so see and i got it lined up to where it should go on there and then it'll plop through and then you see how it's it's flush to the body now and see that's what i need to do and that avoids the oddness of the you know what i mean the other ones so and I try to get the other ones closer, but that's pretty close. And that's, you know what I mean? It's very cool. So I'll do that to all four and we'll see in a little bit. Okay, I got the back two, the tailpiece done. And I just wanted to show you how it looks. See, that's how it's going to look. And see both are countersunk. So there you go. All right, and we'll see in a little while. All right, I got the bridge completely uh, installed and countersunk. And as you can see, see how it's countersunk and it looks awesome. So, all right, next up is going to be to cut out for the pickup. Now this is going to be tricky because uh, what I might do is I might install everything, do a full string test, and then make a paper cutout of the actual pickup, and then I drill a couple pilot holes to where the pickup normally, you know what I mean, where the hole is, and then take my paper template, lay it on here exactly in the center with the strings, and then cut that out, theoretically. So. All right, let's see what we got. Do a full on string test. All right, we'll see in a little sec. All right, back a little bit. <laughs> I took a little break to let the phone charge up. Uh, all right, so the way I'm going to figure out where the the uh, the EM, you know, the uh, the pickup is going to go, is I took my old template and I cut out for the posts, and then I cut out on the wood where the wood where the opening is. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my EMG out. And I'm going to trace it on a piece of paper. All right, um, just the just the square part, just as close to the square as possible. And then what I'm going to do after that, I'm going to uh, put the neck where it usually goes. Then I'm going to install the bridge again, and then I'm going to get my strings out, and I'm going to figure out exactly where the pickup is centered and perfect. Instead of doing a full-on string test, because you know it's getting later in the day, and I have to put string. Um, tuning pegs and the, the headstock and all this stuff and it just takes a little time so the way I figure it I'm just going to find out exactly where this is going to go and it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of wiggle room anyway <laughs> so it looks pretty close so I'll probably just draw it in right where it is so just want to make sure it's in the exact spot and then I'll cut out the metal pier the you know so the bridge or the uh, pickup can come through but all right we'll see you in a sec let me figure this out okay i actually went ahead and installed you know connected the all three layers of the body uh put a few screws on the diamond plate and i you know installed the neck that way you know there's no misguessing on this and actually i had the forethought which is genius um i'm going to be painting this neck i'm going to be painting it black the back and then you know everything black and then put a 2k clear coat over the whole neck with the inlays and everything so it's going to increase the diameter of the necks by just so much so i actually did uh do a little extra and i probably need to do a little extra over here on the metal just so it doesn't scrape up the neck when i actually go to set the neck in there so but anyway so i got the exact placement so i'm gonna do the back i'm gonna go ahead and drill some holes some pilot holes get the scroll saw back going and then i'm gonna very carefully cut out the neck opening or the pickup opening and then I'll push the neck through and then through the other side I'll mark the holes and then we'll see if we get the pick mounted and everything today and that'd be awesome and then we can start glue and then we can glue the, the both layers together and start working on the body and take the next step but yeah it's gonna be pretty cool if it works out the way I hope it will but all right we'll see you in a little bit 
All right, I got my pilot holes drilled out. I got my scroll saw. All right, let's cut out this uh, pick cavity here. Pick up cavity, uh, fingers crossed. <laughs> Hopefully it does well. All right, see a little bit. All right, successful pickup opening, and I marked the spots for these screws. So I'm gonna find the appropriate drill bit and carefully screw an opening there. All right, we'll see in a little bit. All right, we have successfully installed the pickup. Uh, we cut the opening and installed it with the springs and the screws, and it looks phenomenal. Wow, that's working. That is so cool. All right, whoo. Well, we got done what we wanted to get accomplished today. So, I mean, it took all day to do that, but uh, wow, the overall effect is just stunning. That's cool. Diamond Plate Ninja Warrior. Wow, that is cool. Let's see, uh, see if I can find the input jack really quickly. Here it is. I just want to see what it looks like uh, with the rest of the things. One sec. <laughs> I'll be right back. All right. Uh, I just kind of mocked up, you know, put these in there temporarily. I got the pedometers, but they're not they're not screwed down or nothing. They just got the holding the knobs. But yeah, there we go. That's how it's gonna look. Pretty sweet. Of course, like I said before, I'll I'll take some of that polish and I'll brighten all this and I'll, you know all the screws and everything like that. And it's gonna be cool. And tomorrow we gotta do the strap buttons on the back of the neck plate and then right about there. And then we can glue the bottom to the top. We can probably glue it tonight. I don't know. We're kind of losing daylight, so I'm gonna wrap it up for today. We got a lot done. That was pretty cool. But yeah, I just wanted to show you. Diamond plate is installed, <laughs> so and it worked out good uh, with the input jack. Cause remember I said I accounted for the extra girth, so it's like perfectly in the center. See, that's cool. And when this is all painted black and everything like that, the gloss black, it's just gonna, it's just gonna be amazing. Yeah. All right. Just wanted to show you where we're at. Getting it done. Two days progress. Not too shabby. So, all right, hope oh, everybody's having a good night and this probably conclude. I'm gonna clean up a big old mess, of course. Uh, I've got some tools, I gotta straighten out everything. So, uh, hope everybody's having a good night, like I said, and we will see you tomorrow to continue. All right, have a good night. final update I got my mess cleaned up I got everything in the house and nice one to show you how awesome everything was today that's pretty cool got the diamond plate piece cut and tomorrow we'll glue it together we'll install the strap buttons uh, install the tune keys maybe do a full-on uh, uh, string test you know with all the strings and everything and make sure everything's good to go before we start the body work it's always been my tradition lately so I just wanted to show you one last time but yeah it looks pretty cool diamond plate all right and the next ninja warrior underneath the Bart Simpson guitar which I got the neck today up there so we'll be starting on that one pretty soon uh, is going to be the uh, rhinestone version of this so it's going to be basically like this guitar with all the rhinestones, uh, but that shape and with a Floyd Rose single um, pickup, uh, probably a chrome pickup. But anyway, we'll talk about that this time. I hope everybody's having a good day. I am tired. I am beat. But uh, all right, we'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a good day. Good morning. How's everybody doing on this fine morning? It is... October 7th, 2022, and it's time again to work on the Ninja Warrior number four, the Diamond Plate Electric Guitar Build. Okay, as you recall yesterday, we got a ton done yesterday, uh, and today I want to try to accomplish as much as possible as well. Um, all right, so the plan for today is to um, obviously glue the, uh, the two sections of wood together, because right now they are not glued together and they're temporary fixed from the back but uh glue the the top piece and the bottom piece together make sure all the wiring is good do the courtesy cuts i always like to you know make it so it's easier to 
you know, when you go to wiring to fish everything through. Then install the strap buttons and then do a full on string test. Uh, install just the, the, you know, the necessities. And I'll probably do the string test with the diamond plate on the guitar. Just a couple screws, of course. And then the bridge without the pickup, of course, or the input jack or the volume knobs or anything like that. Do a full string test, which it'll sound kind of different and really cool because it's got the metal and it'll make it resonate. Uh, I've got a spare set of music yo strings that i have that i can use and not worry about burning them up so all right so i got all my stuff inside i'll get everything set up outside and then once we if we accomplish all that that means i've got to get the neck and install the tuners and everything like that and i'm actually going to replace the nut the nut that came on the neck that's a really good neck but the nut is just you know, just really cheap plastic kind of nuts and you know i always like to have the nuts good uh quality i know that sounds kind of it's early it's early <laughs> so uh get that all squared away do a full sound check and then after that is good to go and we dial all everything else in and maybe if i need to add any kind of body filler then we'll go through the ugly phases and we'll do the the body filler uh the bondo on the side fill in like these little voids here and then we get all that done we'll sand that and then we'll start to apply the wood grain filler and we'll start working towards making this finish the best as possible. And then, like I said before in past videos, it's going to be the black gloss. So it's going to be pretty awesome. So, all right. And after we finally get all that done, then we'll start working on the neck, the front work. There's still so much more to do. Got to cut the piece for the diamond plate for the neck. Um, the front of the headstock. Uh, figure out the uh, tuning pegs if I want to countersink like I did on these to avoid any of the bits, which I'll probably do. And just, just, just so much more to go, but it's just going to be such a fun journey. And I've really enjoyed this build so far. Just two days in, and we've gotten that much done. So, all right, another two days, no matter how far we got. Um, got the parts coming for the Bart Simpson guitar. That's going to be here shortly, so we'll be working on that. And then uh, the uh, guitar for the Angel Plays guitar. The neck is coming from China, so it's on its way, but that could take, that could take a lot of time. So, all right, and then we've got to... Put a second can of 2K clear coat on the Ninja Warrior number three guitar, the slime version, and uh, we'll get that going. But all right, so let me get everything set up outside. Uh, sorry for the long winded intro, but I just wanted to recap what I wanted to do today, and we will see you when I get everything set up outside. All right, we'll see you soon. All right, got everything transferred outside, I got my stuff scattered everywhere, <laughs> and we're ready to work. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is i'm going to separate the uh the two layers and make sure all the wiring is completely good and if that's completely good then we're going to go ahead and glue the bottom and the top pieces together and make it a solid body all right so let me get that going and i'll be back in a while all right got everything just make up like i had said and what i want to show you as far as courtesy cuts here's the wiring i think i showed you all the wiring routing yeah it's pretty cool pretty straightforward so you know, from the 9-volt uh, battery compartment to the pedometers and the uh, the ground for the bridge posts. And so, and what I meant by the courtesy cuts, um, let's see if I can show you this. See, I just like to shave a little, you know, shave a little, like right there, shave a little off in certain spots. That way when you go to wire it, the wires, you know, they easily just boop, boop, boop. So I got my Dremel tool. And I'll just uh, go ahead and do the curtsy Dremels that way, you know, when, like I said, when you wire it, it's just, you know, it's just easier than just having a square opening where it's kind of hard to find a hole, which, whoop. So let me do that. And then we'll get this ready for gluing. Um, I'll actually sand both sides and then we'll apply some glue and then get these two layers put together. All right, we'll see you in a bit. Glue paste complete. We are one solid body. Awesome. All right. So the next step is going to be um, let me put a little wood filler, or not wood filler, but some bondo on the sides and on the back, and then uh, get that going. And then once I sand that, then we'll go ahead and assemble everything and do a full-on string test. Yeah. All right. So let me get that going, and we'll be right back. All right, quick update. The uh, Ugly Phase Part 1 is in full effect. Got my Bondo body filler. 
and I put a little bit more than I needed I guess I went a little overboard in excess but you know me I'm always searching for the perfect finish and I know this finish is going to be gloss black and it's going to be in the back and not necessarily the showcase of this guitar but I just want it to be as perfect as possible I always strive for that massive perfect guitar finish it's out there I've reached it I've got my finger like you know like touching the 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 ring or the the chalice you know and just just barely out of reach but let's see if one day we can actually get there but all right so we're gonna let this cure and put some sanding on it i guess in the meantime i can get the neck out and put the install the tuning keys i could do that uh while this is curing this cures fairly simple you know very quickly so it shouldn't take that long and then i'll get the sand it nice and pretty and then we'll do a full on string test. All right, we'll see you in a little bit. All right, the ugly phase part one has been completed. The body filler has been sanded and it is looking awesome. Yeah, look at that, that is just cool. All right, I love that part. That's the first, first step of the transformation. So yeah, look at how that good that turned out. All right, so next step is gonna be to uh, get a full-on string test so let me install everything I need to install put this we're gonna put some strings on here and see how this thing sounds and see if it's fairly middle intonate we could even intonate it because we've got the uh, the quick intonate points so yeah looks pretty good all right let me get the neck out and install the tuning keys and we'll be right back all right got the neck out and we're gonna install some tuning keys and the nut on here is pretty bad so I, you know i'm going to still do a full string test i'll replace the nut when i do the fret work and everything like that but it should be good enough to get just a basic basic sound of what's going to go on all right so let me install this and i'll be back in a second all right got the tuning keys installed and looks pretty good all right so let me get the body back out I'm over there hopefully it's not getting hot in the sun all right, and put on the essentials and then we'll put the body and the neck together and then we'll get some strings on here all right we'll see in a little bit uh, all right got the neck installed and looking good and before i install the bridge and get ready to put some strings on here i'm going to do the usual i'm going to install the strap buttons so let me install that i'm going to put one here and then one on the back side of the plate all right we'll see in a little bit all right strap button installation complete all right let me grab a strap and make sure it hangs properly we'll see in a little sec all right strap placement installation in a good spot and it's looking pretty killer can't wait to get the metal on the headstock that's gonna look cool but yeah this is how it hangs perfect position too your hand goes right to the bridge right there and you can reach all the frets easy it's just awesome i'm really digging the shape like i said this is the fourth one so far well the four, yeah the fourth one so far the shape that i mean so yeah that's cool with the diamond plate so all right, let me get the bridge installed and some strings. We'll do a sound test and I'll be right back. All right, got some strings on there and all my measurements are spot on. The pickup is dead center. Look at that. Pickup is dead center. The strings, the neck is dead center with the strings and I can adjust either way if I need to. Um, all right, so, and we are good height. I didn't have to shim the neck at all. And see we are good we got plenty of room to go up and down and so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna get the strings to tension and then to intonate and then i'll be right back we'll do a sound check all right we'll see in a little bit let me show you all right see you in a sec all right how's everybody doing all right i got it stringed up i got it to tension i got it somewhat intonated uh, this nut, like I had said before, is really bad, so when I replace this nut, it'll be better. The strings are like almost a quarter inch off the fretboard. I mean, I could cut it and make it all perfect, but why? I'm going to replace it anyway, but and that makes it sound a little bit out of tune, even though it is in tune, but... And the hands are completely dry from working with all this, but... Neat fret work, of course. Got some high and low frets. All 
and it's gonna look really cool and it's got the diamond plate on the headstock and it's completely black because right now it's bondo blue <laughs> See, it sounds out of tune like that because the strings are so far off the fret that it bangs it and it's more in tune down here. See how it's in tune? Or more in tune because it's not, has enough to bend. It's like Jakey e. Lee bending right there. Plus brand new strings. But anyway, she wanted to give you a quick sound test. Somebody getting a roof next door, or a couple doors down, so it's gonna be kind of loud here in a minute. But yeah, string test is actually good. And I might actually shim the neck just a hair, because it is a little bit low on the end, the low end of the intonation. And when I shim it, I'll just put like a tiniest little shim in there, and it'll very slightly back pitch the neck and that way it'll give me a little bit more room but as far as distance away from the fret or the the body itself it's we're, we're really good so when the pickup is there it's gonna it's gonna look awesome but all right so looking at it, it almost kind of looks like a uh, washburn Dimebag Daryl kind of with the uh, diamond plate. Anyway, alright, so we'll do the next step. I'll just dis disassemble the whole guitar and then we're gonna start with the, the body filler, the ugly stage part two. see you in a little bit. Alright, another quick update. Got all the non-essentials put away and it's time for the ugly phase part two. Oh yeah, so I'll mix me up a batch of wood grain filler. As always, I use the plastic all-purpose wood grain filler and I'll mix me up a batch and start applying some layers and it's gonna be awesome. Alright, we'll see you in a little bit after I get a layer or two on there. Alright, talk to you and the quick update, uh, Ugly Phase Part 2 is in full effect. I've got the first uh, layer of uh, wood pillar on there and it's looking as it should. Ugly. <laughs> but you can see like it, it's pretty good and flat from all that uh, Bondo that I laid on there. So this will be a really, really good body when it dries. Can't wait to get some gloss black paint. But Alright, so we're going to let this dry for about half an hour. Uh, in between, I'll be doing this, that, the other. So, uh, all right, and I'll keep you in, keep you in, and when I get it finished for the day, um, with all the layers, I'll film another little clip, and you'll see that like right. All right, how's everybody doing? <laughs> I'm back. Uh, it's had a couple hours to dry. I think we're good enough. I think we're dry. We're. Uh, Ugly phase is in full effect, of course, but uh, I think we're ready for some sanding. We might just be able to put the hanger and actually some layers of 2-in-1 primer base coat on here. Let me uh, start sanding and get this looking beautiful. I just wanted to show you. This is going to be fairly quicker than normal because I only have to do one side. You know, this side is getting the uh, the aluminum, so... All right, so let me sand this down and make it look as beautiful, transform it into the beautiful thing that it can be, <laughs> the beautiful guitar I, I feel that's inside that I'm getting ready to bring out. All right, so we'll see in a little bit. All right, another quick update. The uh, ugly phase has passed. It is looking awesome. It's definitely sanding. Getting ready to lose daylight, so... Sun's gonna set, so I'm gonna put this on a hanger and get a couple layers of two-in-one primer coats on here. But I just wanted to show you how good it turned out. Wow, I always love the transformation. Yeah, it's awesome. 
lesson. All right. Like I said, put it on the hanger. And then give me some two-in-one Krylon primer. And get it to look awesome. All right, we'll see you in a little bit. All right, we are good to go for some two-in-one primer coats. Got it on the hanger, and it looks amazing. Awesome. All right, let me blow it off, make sure everything else is good to go. And we're going to get some primer on this guy tonight. All right. And I love the fact that I'm going to put a little bit of primer on the front, but it's not crucial because it's going to be covered. So it's going to be awesome. All right, we'll see you in a little bit. All right, as you can see, the sun is setting. See the sun? <laughs> ah, the horizon. <laughs> but yeah, two in one uh, Krylon never disappoints. I just wanted to show you. Hope that sun isn't too bright in this. But uh, yeah, that looks pretty killer. Ogre the phase has passed, and now we are good to go. All right, so I'll let this set for a couple days, do some sanding any filler that needs to be done and of course you know the front's just minimal i just put a little primer just because i'll hit these spots with some black when i when i do it black but yeah just wanted to show you <laughs> pretty cool let's see but i'll show you probably show you some more inside the house and i got it hanging but uh yeah pretty cool Hope everybody's having a good day. Hope everybody's enjoyed watching this build so far. <laughs> I have really enjoyed making it. And I'm so glad to have you along with me. So, yeah. All right. Still a lot of work left to be done. But look at how how good the, the finish is turning out. And you know, I'm going to sand it. And I was like, I always say, try to make the best finish possible. It was a little easier this time because it wasn't a Floyd Rose, for one. <laughs> Secondly, I just have to paint just the back because the front's the hard part was the uh, diamond plate. So, all right. Hope everybody's having a good night. The sun says goodbye. <laughs> it's a pretty cool effect, though, the sun setting there. It's almost like a uh, Ninja Warrior 4 eclipse. <laughs> so, all right. Have a good night, and we will see you tomorrow. All right, take it easy. Yeah, I want to play the music from Paco's now. <laughs> just kidding. Alright, just wanted to show you how good the finish is turning out so far on the Ninja Warrior number 4. And then we got the Ninja Warrior number three. And then we got the Ninja Warrior number one. And number two. And number three. And number four. And number five. <laughs> and there's a diamond plate. So, anyway, me being pretty quirky. But yeah, it's looking good. I'm perfecting the process of a finish. Yeah. But alright, <laughs> we will see you tomorrow. Pretty awesome. Well, that green is bright. Wow, it looks good. That's got one more can of 2K going on tomorrow, so. And then we'll be good to go. Alright. We'll talk to you soon. Good morning, everybody. It is still woo, October 10th, 2022, and it's a beautiful day here in Central Florida. Yeah, sun's out, feels good. It's about 65 degrees. It's a little, a little windy out here. Um, time to continue work on the Ninja Warrior number four guitar, the diamond plate. And the body's been curing for a while and it looks awesome, but I'm trying to make it perfect. So I'm gonna get some 320 grit sandpaper and sand. And I don't know, weather permitting, we might try to go for some coats of gloss black. And I could always sand the gloss black, and then there's going to be 2K over it anyway. But, uh, yeah, I just wanted to show you how it looks before I start doing any sanding. Got a, you know, just usual primer. 
So let me sand on this for a while and I'll see you in a little bit. All right, let me sand on this for a little while. I don't know how this battery's cutting out. I might have to replace the battery on this phone, but uh, see how it goes and we'll be right back. All right, the primer has been sanded and wow, I am just blown away how well this turned out. I had one little touch up couple little minor things just one little touch up and that's it on the whole body it just looks amazing I wanted to show you real quick yeah it's way too windy to do any kind of painting let me show you I mean you get gusts that come through here and anything could be traveling through the air and land right in your finish so not today uh, I was hoping to put some black on here but yeah I have to wait till more so I'm going to go hang this back up and then get out the, the Bart Simpson. It's going to take a long time to sand that good. So I just wanted to give you a quick update on the Diamond Plate Ninja Warrior. How well the paint the finish is turning out. Let's see if I can get some better. Wow. Just getting really good at the... Uh... Yeah, see? Cause this has to be perfect because it's going to be a gloss black finish so it's it'll show any little wrinkle imperfection so wow okay and we will see you in a little bit all right good morning everybody it is october 13th 2022 and it's sunny but yet damp outside that's time to do a little fret work we're gonna do the fret work on the ninja warrior number four guitar or the diamond plate guitar and as you recall, we worked on the body and last uh, waiting on the first coats of black to cure so we can sand and apply another coat. So we'll do some fret work. So as usual, I got all my tools. I got my tape. Got my circuit. I got my front end file. I got my leveling beam. All my good, nice Stumac centered Z file rocker arm. Okay. As always, I've done this so many times on camera before, but I'll just be brief today. And first step is going to be making sure that the fretboard and the all right, just the truss rod and the neck and everything is completely straight. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to tape up all the frets and we'll see when we get that done. All right, see you in a few minutes. All right, got the frets taped up. I'm going to go ahead and give me a new, uh, new piece of 320 grit sandpaper on my leveling beam and I'll be right back. And then we'll go ahead and mark the frets with my Sharpie. Alright, got a fresh piece of sandpaper on my leveling beam and I've got all my frets marked. Now I'm going to go ahead and put a level on all the frets and then I'll take my rocker arm and make sure that all the frets are level to each other. And I've shown this on previous videos so please look back and just search fret work on my Facebook page and you'll see all the different times I've done this and I've posted it. Alright, we'll see when I complete that. Alright, see you in a while. Alright, that wasn't too bad. All the frets are level to each other. And let's see if I can get a close-up of how much material was taken off. Not too bad. Loving the theme. Alright, so the next step is I went and checked all the frets to each other and everything is perfect. So they'll play awesomely. And I already did the fret end files. I did that prior to taping it up. I always try to do that before. That way, this step right here. And when I sand it over, it'll look all perfect. So, all right. So the next step is to remake mark the frets, and then with my centered Z vial from Stumac, which I've always looked for a sponsorship. If uh, Stumac, if you ever see these videos, please send me some of these. I love your products, and I will boost your products because I believe in them 100%. Well, the fret, fret mark, fret, fret files anyway. <laughs> All right, so let me mark these and then put a center on there and then we'll be back in a little while. All right, see you in a little bit. All right, all the frets are level to each other and I knew what we're gonna do now is we're gonna round over the frets. They're in triangle shape right now. We took off the heads and we leveled them. And we're starting, excuse me, starting with 600, 800, 1,000, 12, 100, 1,500, 2,000, 3,000, 5,000, 7,000, all the way up to 10,000 grits of sandpaper. And we're going to round over the edges and then put a nice bright polish on these frets. And we'll, we'll see you probably about an hour or so when we finish that. All right. All right. All the frets have been leveled, crowned, and polished. And they are looking amazing. And uh, we are good to go. 
Yeah, and all the fret ends feel really nice. Went with the fret end file, feel like butter. Yeah, it's awesome. So, all right, so next step is gonna be to replace the nut. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock off the old nut there simply by just tapping it very lightly with a screwdriver, flathead screwdriver or something that's not gonna, you gotta be careful not to gouge into the wood at all. But normally they just hold these nuts on with a single CA glue drop or two so they pop right off. And then I'll be replacing that, shaping it, a new nut and replacing that. And then we're gonna start working on the metal for the top of the headstock. So we'll get out the metal and make a template, but anyway. First step is to replace the nut, so I'll see you in a little bit. Alright, tapped off the old nut. Cheap old nut. And this was left over, had a little bit free, and I cleaned it out. This is the new nut I'm going to be using. I love these ones. Alright, let me get it out of the package and then see how we got to shape it up. Alright, we'll see you in a second. Alright, got my new nut, and I cleaned away any debris so it seats properly, which it does. Alright, so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to file this, file it flatter, a little bit thinner on the back side, and then it's a little wider than it needs to be, so I'm going to shave off the edge just ever so slightly on either side, make it fit perfectly, and we'll be right back. Alright, got the nut shaped perfectly, just wanted to show it to you as best I can. And let me get some CA glue, and then lock it into place. I shaved the proper height and then the width. So let me get the CA glue and I'll shape it and I'll set it right in place over here. Alright, got the nut perfectly glued in place. And you always leave just a little room and you should, you know, need to cut the, the slots of the nut a little bit to accommodate for the strings. I usually usually a thicker gauge string, a 10 to 52, so I always have to cut it just a little bit wider, but yeah, it's perfect. Alrighty, so the next step is we're going to get a paper template and we're going to make a paper, paper template so we can cut the uh, the uh, diamond plate material of the headstock. So let me go ahead and get a piece of paper and then work that. Alright, let's see in a little bit. Alright, I got my thicker paper out and I traced out the uh, the shape I'm going to need. I got my scissors and I'm going to carefully cut out the shape of bread bite. Alright, got the exact shape traced out and then I placed it on the top there. And you can see I pushed the impressions. So now I know where the holes are. I got me a brand new blade on my X-Acto knife. Well, I'm gonna install a brand new blade. And then I'm gonna carefully cut those out so I can have a perfect template. All right, we'll see you when I get that done. All right, got the perfect cut out. And it looks awesome. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> All right. And I'm contemplating whether I should put a small lip there. I think I will, just a small lip and the opening there just to have a little extra support for the metal. Not that it'll matter too much and I'm, I'm going to have to, when I install the neck, I'm going to have to file. Well, it looks pretty straight up and down so we'll see how it goes, but yeah. Alright, so let me go outside and get the uh, scroll saw ready with a piece of metal and we'll trace it over to the metal and then cut that out. got to find the perfect piece and everything. Alright, we'll see Actually, on second thought, I don't think I need it because I'm using this type of uh, truss hard cover. And I'm going to have to probably cut into one or two of the diamonds to make it flat underneath here. I'm going to try to find a piece that has minimal, you know, pieces, you know, the diamonds, the actual diamonds underneath here. I was going to put like a little sliver there in between here just to give it a little extra stability. But I don't think it's necessary on this one because it's pretty thick metal. So, all right, I'll see you in a little bit. Alright, got a couple of pieces left over. I mean, I got a real big piece left over too, but I've got these small little pieces. And on a side note, my uh, father went and picked me up a bottle of Iron Brew. I guess you can get this now in an international food section of your local Publix. Uh, living in Central Florida, it's pretty cool. I, I'm a big fan of Scotland. I've always loved Scotland. Just everything about the country I've always been uh, intrigued by. Their history, the, the culture, anyway. And... Uh, started drinking iron brew and i get it for my birthday special occasions they always hook me up this is a pretty good soda i mean it's full of sugar so it's but it's a real only 94 calories per bottle so if you've ever had iron brew it's pretty good and it's spelled i-r-n-b-r-u 
it's kind of like a bubblegum, orangish kind of taste. Uh, it's a very unique flavor. So, but it's really good. But anyway, aside from that, all right. So I got me some of the metal material, and it's good that I have the the you know the shapes on the back that I could see through. So let me figure out a good spot, maybe get the the marker and then mark me out a good section and then uh, get the squirrels on. I might actually do this inside. No sense of going outside with the squirrels and the bugs and the crows and all the rest of it. I mean, I can cut this material in here and it won't leave that much debris floating around in the air or anything. So let me see if I can do that and we'll be right back. Alright, got me the piece that I wanted to use perfectly as far as the hatches. And I found a little section that I'm going to have to shave a little bit off, but the where I have to shave it off is going to be covered by the, uh, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's going to work actually perfectly right there. Because I'll have to shave down these little bits that's underneath it, but I won't have to shave and then it won't be visible. And then these, I'll show you what I'm going to I'm going to do the same thing like I did with these with the, uh, oh, I forgot one. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, with the same thing I did with the bridge post. So I'm going to make it a little bit wider so the actual top of the tuners goes directly through it. So it's going to be pretty cool. Alright, so let me get the scroll saw out and we'll situate that and I'll be right back. Alright, got my scroll saw cut out. Or brought out. So let me cut out the pattern very carefully. I mean, I got plenty of material that I can, if I get it wrong, I could always do it again. But I like to get it up the first time. Go fingers crossed there. I'll see you then. Uh, Alright, perfectly cut out the piece of metal. No tear away up front, so we are good to go. All right, let me apply this to the neck and see how I did. I'll be right back and put this away. I don't keep this anymore. All right, we'll see in a little bit. All right, all the lines are perfect, and you know I'll touch up these minor little with a Dremel tool. But I wanted to show you also. I did take account for the, uh, you know, the neck being back pitched, so the plates kind of sit with a little bit of a C, let's see if I can get it to focus on there. But where it connects to the nut there, where it connects, I did the angle, so that way it's perfect. So it lines right up with it, so. Yeah, it's good, and the edges look fairly close. And I travel and Dremel and make it perfect. And I'm gonna have to figure out the, first I'll drill the, I'll get the Dremel tool out. Well, actually I'll get, first I'll get, I'll mark a spot and so the, the drill bit doesn't wander. Then I'll get a drill bit and then, you know, make these holes and then I'll get the Dremel and make it perfect and then I'll set it on there and I'll do that step. And then we're gonna have to figure out the screws. I could theoretically, uh, I've seen it done both ways. I could theoretically glue the metal to the wood and that way I wouldn't have any screws. But I kind of like the fact that the screws kind of match the body because the body has screws. So I'd have to figure out where to place the screw holes. And there wouldn't be that many. There would be like one, two, three, four, maybe five all together, five screws. Because you know you want to go overboard with the screws. So yeah, just like one in each, two, three, four, five. Kind of like one in each corner. One, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five screws. I'm oh, sorry, five screws total. So that'd be pretty cool. And place it, you know, in obvious, you know, not noticeable spots. And then there's going to be three holes for the truss rod cover. But we'll do all that. And then once we get all this situated, then I'm going to spray paint my logo. Uh, I'm going to get out the Cricut machine and then the the you know like I did there and spray paint in black on the metal so I don't have to put any clear coat over it. So that's going to be pretty awesome. So, all right, let's see you next step. Let me get the, uh, the Dremel tool out or get out the, uh, you know, make these holes and I'll be right back. All right, got me the appropriate drill bit on the drill and I scored a mark in the center and then I further deepened it with the Dremel or the, the X-Acto blade. So that way when the bit, you can see the bit has a point and hopefully it won't wander so and I'm gonna get a piece of wood and stick it underneath here so when it jumps around I do believe I got a piece of wood yep in here so I've got my piece of wood underneath and then I'm gonna drill out these holes and hopefully they're and I already checked it with the neck and uh, there is a dog Emma 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 dog say hi 
So we need to start one and two and I'll be back. All right, got the rough holes cut open and it was a bit tricky and it caught, uh, cut my finger. Uh, not too deep, just a scratch, thank God, because I can still play with my tips because, man, that would have sucked cut my finger open because then I couldn't play with, you know, this is my fret hand. I play about two, three hours every day, so be very careful when you do this, very careful. Like I said, just a scratch, but it could have been a lot worse, but all right. So let me get the Dremel out, clean up these holes, and see where we're at. All right, see you in a bit. All right, it's looking pretty good so far. Uh, pretty cool. All right, so I'm gonna get my tuning keys out, and I'm gonna place the top pieces on, and then I'm gonna make it wide enough for the top piece to land actually on the wood. So it's not gonna be connecting to, you know, it's not gonna be on top of the metal piece. It's gonna be through the metal, but just barely big enough so it just fits through and then on the surface of the wood so it'll look flush and counter something look perfect so all right let me get that going and be right back but yeah it's it's pretty cool i think it's uh the cross hashes are definitely lined up with the body so that's perfect all right we'll see in a little bit all right this is what i'm talking about see i got the metal on there and i've got one of the tuning keys put through and then see where the top is and then i took a a sharpie and i marked out the circle where the opening is going to be for the washer and the top. All right, let me show you. Hold on. All right, so where that leftover line is, I'm going to try to get as close to that as possible and then get it to where the washer goes through the metal and onto the wood. Like I said, I'll be right back. All right, first one complete and it's perfect. See, that's what I'm talking about. See where I cut the opening? I'm trying to, you know, not put any scratches on the metal piece itself, but I'm going to do all six like that. But for the truss rod cover though, I'm not going to do that per se. I'm just going to, because the truss rod cover is going to fit like that. So what I'm going to have to do when I get to that point is to meticulously uh, cut the, you know, mark and cut the diamonds and then bore that material away. So this will fit through around the diamonds, you know, I don't want to cut that out of course I could I guess it would make it easier than having to scratch that part but we'll we'll see I mean one way or the other I could theoretically not even do it because well now from the side you can definitely see but uh, yeah all right so let me uh, figure that out but let me do the other six and I'll be right back but it's looking cool though that's gonna be awesome I'm going to do, like I said, the diamond inlays, so it's going to be sweet. And I'm going to paint the whole back of the neck up to the fretboard, of course, black. So this neck's going to be black, so it's going to be really cool. And I'm going to do the 2K over everything, so it's going to be awesome. All right, it looks pretty good. Not 100% perfect. Still perfecting this skill. I wish I could have the holes just a little bit closer. But that's just being super picky. I mean, it looks great, so... All right, so now the next step is, let me go ahead and, sorry, lock this plate in by drilling some screws, figuring out some screw holes, getting that set, then taking everything off, and then getting the lines perfect. So all right, let me work on that, and we'll be right back. All right, I decided I'm gonna go with four screws, actually. So I'm gonna go one in the corner, one in the centers, and then one in the tier, because I figure there's gonna be three screws here that are gonna hold down and I'm going to have to cut out those diamonds, but that's underneath the truss rod, but we'll get to that. Um, so let me go ahead and get the uh, uh, drill and drill some holes and figure out which screws I'm going to use. Probably going to try to use the same screws, I'm just going to have to cut them down. So I'm going to get that going and we'll see in a little bit. That's looking pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome. And my logo with spray paint is going to be pretty sweet. All right, we'll see in a little bit. All right, drill the uh, screw holes for the, uh, the screws. And then I countersunk, as you can see, the Dremel bits. And then I opened up for the uh, truss rod cover. And then I marked out where I'm gonna have to burrow down on the diamond plate. So try to figure that out. All right, so let me go ahead and install the, the uh, diamond plate uh, on the front of the neck and we'll bring it back. Now I got a drill bit and I'm going to countersink the screws 
And I'm gonna use the same screws that I used on the body. And we'll see when I get that done. All right, the diamond plate face has been installed. Looks pretty awesome. Oh yeah, pretty killer. That's gonna look awesome. All right, so I have to trim a little bit on this side, which will be fine. I'll just either take the Dremel or I'll take a some sandpaper. On this side, it looks pretty perfect. So, and then I'm gonna try to figure out how to cut down the diamonds on the truss rod cover that way it lays flat but all right let me work on that and we'll see in a sec but yeah it looks looks killer and like i said i'm gonna paint this whole neck black and right now it's kind of a d-shaped neck but seeing how we're gonna paint the neck anyway i might elect to just for playability sand down the center of the neck especially closer to the first few frets and make it more of a C-shaped contour, just on the that side, like from the, the center of the neck on, sand it, and make it like really flat and really playable. And that'd be pretty cool. It doesn't feel that chunky right now, but I think that would, when the extra paint that's gonna be added, it's gonna be really killer, so. All right, so let me figure out the test rod cover thing, and we'll be right back. All right, use my sharp Dremel bit for the countersink of the truss rod cover, and it fits nicely, so it'll look good in there, and it's nice and flush now, so yeah, that's perfect. So when I go to install that, that'll be perfectly flush, so we're good to go. All right, and I marked on the back where the overhang hangs, so I'm going to take the Dremel tool, and I'm going to shave that back, and we'll be right back. All right, final update of today's progress. They are looking good. This rod cover has been installed. Diamond plate headstock cover is installed. And it looks great. Yeah. And I filed it down smooth enough. So we are good to go. One thing less to do with the diamond plate, like I said, is to uh, spray paint my logo with Made in the USA on there. And then once we do all that, uh, this is, next step is to disassemble the whole neck. Um, we'll do this tomorrow. It's already getting pretty late. We've lost sunlight, so we can't go outside. I'd rather... Um, this is uh, like a D-shaped neck right now. Um, it feels pretty good. You know, I may not actually... You know, it's kind of a thing. I'm not really sure. I can, you know, make it thinner and more playable, but it already is pretty thin. It doesn't feel that chunky at all. And, you know, instead of messing with it, I'm, I'm still going to put a sand on it before the actual painting of it, just so the paint sticks better. I'm going to use the black with the primer paint, so it's going to look awesome. And then we're going to go 2K over everything after that. And I'm going to do the diamond inlays, uh, first, third, fifth, you know, all the usual places. Two on the 12th, and that's going to look cool. Then we're going to 2K the whole neck with the black including the fretboard 2K over the inlays because I want everything level and shiny and looking perfect. So, yeah. All right, so like I said, that concludes today's progress on the Ninja Warrior number four diamond plate. Uh, headstock, uh, part of my headstock's been installed, so we're good. And the fretwork's been done, so all that's left to do is paint, uh, logo, and we're good to go. Yeah, it looks awesome. All right. I <laughs> can't wait to get everything rolling on this one. This one's going to be an awesome guitar. Alright, time to clean my mess. I made a considerable mess. Um, glad I did it inside, but at the same time, I have made a mess. So, look at this. It's everywhere. Alright, we will see you tomorrow. Hope everybody's having a good night and take it easy. Alright, how's everybody doing? And it is still October 17, 2022. Time to continue work on the Ninja Warrior number four diamond plate. And we're gonna install, I got the cricket the cricket machine out, and we're gonna install the logo. And I, I'm trying to think if I should do it in flat black. Yeah, probably flat black. It'd probably be best because the pickup is flat black, but the body is gloss, but I think flat black would actually stand out a little bit better. So okay, so just got finished doing the Bart Simpson logo and fretboard marker and so we're going to continue 
since I got the mess and everything, we're gonna go ahead and do this. All right, let me uh, print up a logo, and we'll attach it, and we'll see what see what happens. We'll see you in a little bit. All right, got it taped up. The logo. Uh, let me go spray some paint on there. I'm gonna try to press down this sticker. Hopefully, it sticks and we'll get the proper logo. All right, we'll see you in a little bit. Good afternoon, everybody. It is the 11th of October. Yeah, it's a little drifty, drafty. I'm not sure. Uh, we're just gonna go for it. We had good. We just finished painting the primer on the Bart Simpson guitar and had some luck. So we're gonna spray some black base coats on the Ninja Warrior number four guitar, the diamond plate at the back. Um, and I blew it off, and I corrected the little, tiny little insignificant little bits. And uh, we'll see how it goes. We blow it off again and put a couple light coats, and we'll be right back. All right, got the first couple of layers of black and I'm gonna take it very very slowly and it's going very well I mean it's uh, no bugs in the finish I'm paying super light coat as you can see and you know what I might let this fully cure sand it and then go for another round of black what do you think of that that would make it like you know mirror finish it might not even need the 2k <laughs> no, I'm kidding. but uh, yeah just taking it slow uh, learning my lesson <laughs> so it hasn't been too windy no bugs have flown in anything yet and it's just relaxed smooth day I mean when you have such a success from like the uh, the Bart Simpson guitar went so well I mean it's just it puts you in such a great mood and this guitar hasn't fought me at all this guitar has been the most complex and difficult I think that I've done in a while with the diamond plate and you know getting all the logistics of all that done and just just nailing it I mean it's just gone smooth of course now me saying that hopefully uh, I didn't jinx myself but yeah I added a little extra black bits here I know it's gonna be covered with diamond plate but just instead of like seeing you know if it there is like some sort of opening somewhere you don't want to see all the way to the wood so I you know rather have the black but all right so let's uh, let this flash off for another six seven minutes and then we'll go for another coat and uh probably go for about four coats i think that probably be pushing it four or five maybe and then let it cure and see if we need to sand on it it probably will sand on it with some 320 grit and make it really perfect and then go for the next round all right we still got fret work to do and we still got a bunch to do on this guitar we got to cut the headstock uh, metal and all that and get all the fret work done and we're gonna paint that neck, the whole back of it, not the, the fret, well, eventually gonna paint the fret, fret board because I'm gonna have it gloss with the 2K with the over, but we're gonna do the diamond inlays. So that's gonna be really killer. So we'll get to that. And um, my headstock logo is gonna be on the diamond plate and I'm gonna paint that black. But of course that's not gonna get any paint over it. It's just gonna be painted on the metal itself. So, all right, everybody's having a good day and we'll see you in a little bit. All right, conclusion on the Ninja Warrior number four guitar. I guess I got a little arrogant. <laughs> and I was talking about how well the paint was going. And then I let put it on the hanger and I came back and I looked and it was developing a little bit of a run. Uh, let me show you, see if you can see that. Can you see right there in the center of that little nipple thing? And then above it, there's like a little bit of a run. It's not nothing extreme. So this is definitely going to have to be sanded flat again. So that's what I kind of figured anyway, because I want to get rid of some of this. I mean, it looks pretty good, but it does have the orange peel. You can see the orange peel a little bit. So it's not going to be, I mean, I'm familiar with this paint sanding on the Pac-Man guitar. I don't know if you watched that build. That was a nightmare build, the headstock. Um, I had to redo it, redo it. I guess I'm, I was so used to it being so hot and the paint drying so quickly and you trying to get the paint on as fast as you can to get it in the house because the paint would dry so fast. Now that the, the temperature is less and it's lower, the paint's not drying as quickly. So the layers, I mean, need more time to set in between. And I kind of, I guess I got a little cocky, like I said, and I jumped the gun and, but that's not a big deal. You can see the, the little bit of the drip there. And I'm holding upside down for a reason because it only started doing that after it was sitting on the hanger for a few minutes. I just painted it, but other than that, the body looks amazing. You know, the other side of the paint, or the other 
aspects of the paint, the sides and everything, but yeah, so I'm gonna have to do the sanding bit, which it won't be too bad. I mean, and it's already gone down quite a bit since I've been holding it upside down, so I might have to hold it here for a while to let this uh, go down flatter. So that way when I go to sand, I don't want it to take so much paint off. But uh, yeah, I'll do another round anyway. I think it'll make it perfect. And paint, this paint's only it's fairly cheap. It's like $7 a can, so it's not too bad. So I just want to try to make the perfect finish as possible. This is like the second guitar. Second, I'm batting 100. This is like second of four guitars where I've had a drip. Um, there was a drip, a couple drips on the Ninja Warrior number 3 guitar. But I'm not going to... I've decided I don't think I'm going to try to correct them. I could, I guess. But then, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see about that. But Alright, so I just wanted to give you the update. Having some more fun. Uh, went good with the, uh, the Bart Simpson guitar, but let's see if I can get this to lay as flat as possible. And uh, we will see in a little bit. Alright, take it easy. Alright, another quick update. Ninja Warrior number 4. The drip actually diminished quite a bit. Yeah, that is awesome. It went completely down. I guess I was just a little overzealous. I mean, it's still there. You can still see it minorly, but it's way down. And I'm going to sand this anyway. So we're going to go uh, probably about a week, maybe five, seven days. And then we're going to go ahead and sand this and then go for our second round of black and make it even more perfect and get rid of the orange peel. And that's awesome. All right, we'll see you in a little bit. Good morning, everybody. Just a quick update on the Ninja Warrior number four diamond plate. I sanded the, uh, as you recall, I painted uh, the uh, the neck the other day, and it looked kind of like as you, you would expect, kind of like crap on an unfinished neck. But I spent the morning sanding it nice and smooth, so it looks pretty awesome now. So now we're gonna let this cure for the day, for the rest of the day, and then tomorrow morning we're gonna apply another round of black gloss clear coat yeah but it turned out really well i think this is gonna let the next layer of paint lay super flat and this is always the case when you're dealing with an untreated neck or unfinished neck you have to kind of uh, go through this process but yeah it's all sanded smooth and you can see none of the there's no shiny little spots because usually when there's like shiny spots those are low spots so i got it pretty flat pretty smooth so we are good to go and as you recall the body is still uh, curing from the second round of black gloss black let's see if i can show you that and that little valley thing kind of disappeared let's see if i can do this one-handed i think i can yeah yeah there we go and this is the second round after sanding and uh i guess the valley's a little bit there but it's okay. I'm going to sand that again and decide whether I want to go a third round of black before the 2K clear coat or if this will be adequate. So we'll let this cure another day and then we'll go ahead and sand on it. But yeah, I want to make this black as perfect as possible. And you can already see the vast improvement from the first layer sanding the second layer. So I'll probably just sand it for the third layer. Maybe not the whole guitar per se, but just... Um, you know, like this little spot there, a little spot there, just where it needs it. And then maybe just touch up the black instead of doing a full coat of black. Because then you get the chance of any kind of bugs or lint or something flying in your finish. But after you do, I do the 2K clear coat, it's going to look amazing. So, all right, just a quick update on the Ninja Warrior number four electric guitar build. And that's going to be awesome. Can't wait to get that guitar together and assembled. Hope everybody's having a good day. Monday, start of the week, so we'll be working on some other stuff. And I'll be posting it, so stay tuned, and we will see you soon. Alright, we got a good spray. I'm not sure if we got a good uh, logo this time. We'll have to see. Alright, fingers crossed. Alright, we have successful logo. Uh, all things considered, I mean, that's not too shabby. And I'll touch it up, of course, but yeah. Even if it is a uh, hair a little bit small, but I mean, that's just perfect, yeah. Could have been a lot worse because of the, you know, the diamonds actually, you know, the contour of the diamonds. But yeah, I'm satisfied with that. That's not too bad at all. And like I said, I'll touch it up if need be. I've got a fine, fine tip paint marker. 
so I can always, but yeah, it looks pretty good. <laughs> All right. And I like that I did it in flat because it kind of stands out that better that way against the, the shine of the metal. Alright, well, everybody's having a good night and we will see you soon. Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing? It's fine, beautiful Thursday. Yeah, it's Thursday today. Or no, it's Friday actually. Uh, it is August 14th, 2022. Time to continue work on the Ninja. Warrior number four diamond plate guitar and I've dismantled all the parts and I put a 320 grit sandpaper on the entire neck and it feels really good so it's time to tape it off put it on a hanger and we're gonna paint some black gloss paint yeah so let me get some of that done and we'll be right back all right, all right. got the fretboard taped off and got it on the hanger and it's time to put some black base coats. It's going to look good. Hopefully it goes smooth. I'll blow it off really well. Hopefully it's not too windy outside. And we're going to go with some gloss black 2K, 2X. Sorry. So, all right. We'll see you when it's over. When I got it hanging right there. And we'll see you later. All right. Painting the neck on the Ninja Warrior number four. Kind of went on like expected. Kind of crappy, but, you know. Kind of expected this with a raw neck like that. I did sand it and blow it off and prepared. Maybe I should have used a two-in-one primer, but this will be fine. I mean, it looks like, it looks kind of, not not great, but not super bad. But yeah, this kind of as expected, like I said. The first base coat is always like this, just kind of clumpy, uneven, kind of peely, kind of, not peely, but, you know, uh, orange, divoted and wrinkled and stuff here and there, you know what I mean? Just, uh doesn't look that great but when this fully cures probably about four or five days or so I'm gonna put a really you know good sand 320 grit probably you know 600 maybe a thousand grit sand on it and get it looking really really good it's gonna take about three coats of this black before it's like good and perfect so it's just a matter of time just working it but yeah because I, I did learn that on the pac-man guitar remember <laughs> If you remember watching that build, it just took a long time. It was a lot worse than this. This is not so bad, actually. This is uh, fairly easy compared to the Pac-Man was reacting to stuff underneath. And this, we're just going to go with this one paint instead of, you know, worrying about it reacting to anything else underneath. So, yeah, once I sand this and make it beautiful, then it'll be perfect. But, all right. And it's looking like it should, so... I got, we'll call this the paint ugly phase because, yeah, it gets pretty ugly. And right there, the paint kept soaking through and soaking through, soaking through. But that'll cure up when I get things rolling. But, yeah, can't wait to show you what this. I'll make a comparison video of this clip now, how bad it looks compared to when I'm finished. And the paint is just flawless. All right. And we will see you guys soon. Hope everybody's having a good day. All right. Yeah, another quick update on the body. I just finished painting the neck there. Just wanted to show you how the drips kind of uh, kind of resolved themselves for the most part. And I did the finger test on underneath the neck plate, and it seems like it's fairly hardened. It's been a couple days for it to cure. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put a not today. I'm gonna give it one more day, and then we'll go ahead and get a 600 grit sand and take out all this orange peel and take out these drips and make it nice and perfect and then we'll go for another round of black base coats and we'll keep doing that until we get it perfect so just a matter of time with this black black paint you kind of have to do that you have to do it several times to get it right so from what i've learned anyway so i mean it doesn't look bad now it's actually it looks okay i mean it's nowhere near perfect at all but all right, so we'll let this cure another day. And like I said, we'll get the 600 grit sandpaper and try to eliminate, can't go too deep because you know, the base coats, I think I put like three or four coats of black on there. You don't want to get it to the primer, but even then, yeah, you could get it to the primer, but the whole trick of it is to get out all the, the orange peel, like you see the orange peel there and any like dust or anything like that, but it's going to look so good when it's done. So, all right. And we will see you next time. And same thing with the neck. It'll 
once it dries and hardens and we'll go through and sand it and make it beautiful all right it's got to match the beauty of the diamond plate all right hope everybody's having a good day we'll see you soon good morning everybody it is august 16th or no october 16th uh duh brain having brain moments there and it's time to continue working on the Ninja Warrior number no. 4 diamond plate guitar. And it's a beautiful, beautiful day here in Central Florida. And uh, as you recall, I did the first coats of black uh, base coats. And I already sanded it. And remember there was that drip forming over here. And that's gone. I sanded everything really perfect. Spent my time blowing it off. Getting some tack cloth. Um, Making sure there's no dust, trying to make this finish as perfect as always, trying to chase that elusive finish. And this being, like I always say, the gloss black, it'll show any little imperfections. <laughs> so I'm going to try to try to perfect the craft and try to make it as best as I can. So get my gloss black 2X spray paint and primer. So I'll blow this off again, maybe hit it with a tack cloth one more time. And then put a few light coats, and this time we're going to go light, light as possible. Probably about a five, six light coats on there. And then go hang it in the other room. So hopefully things go well. And we get no dust, no bugs, no lint, no nothing. And we will see you in a little bit. See you in a little bit. Good morning, everybody. Just a quick update on the Ninja Warrior number four diamond plate. I sanded the, uh, as you recall, I painted the... Uh, the other uh, neck the other day and it looked kind of like as you, you would expect kind of like crap on an unfinished neck but I spent the morning sanding it nice and smooth so it looks pretty awesome now so now we're gonna let this cure for the day for the rest of the day and then tomorrow morning we're gonna apply another round of black gloss clear coat yeah but it turned out really well I think this is gonna let the next layer of paint lay super flat and this is always the case when you're dealing with an untreated neck or unfinished neck. You have to kind of uh, go through this process. But yeah, it's all sanded smooth. And you can see none of the, there's no shiny little spots. Because usually when there's like shiny spots, those are low spots. So I got it pretty flat, pretty smooth. So we are good to go. And as you recall, the body is still uh, curing from the second round of black gloss black let's see if i can show you that and that little valley thing kind of disappeared let's see if i can do this one-handed i think i can yeah yeah there we go and this is the second round after sanding and uh i guess the valley's a little bit there but it's okay i'm gonna sand that again and decide whether i want to go a third round of black before the 2k clear coat or if this will be adequate. So we'll let this cure another day and then we'll go ahead and sand on it. But yeah, I wanna make this black as perfect as possible. And you can already see the vast improvement from the first layer, sanding the second layer. So I'll probably just sand it for the third layer. Maybe not the whole guitar per se, but just, um, you know, like this little spot there, a little spot there, just where it needs it. And then maybe just touch up the black instead of doing a full coat of black because then you get the chance of any kind of bugs or lint or something flying in your finish. But after you do, I do the 2K clear coat, it's going to look amazing. So, All right, just a quick update on the Ninja Warrior number four electric guitar build. And that's going to be awesome. Can't wait to get that guitar together and assembled. Hope everybody's having a good day. Monday, start of the week, so we'll be working on some other stuff, and I'll be posting it, so stay tuned, and we will see you soon. All right, good afternoon, everybody. It's time to do some more work on the Ninja Warrior number four electric guitar build, and uh, I sanded the neck, as you recall. I wanted to show you in the light how great it turned out. It's not ugly no more like it was when I first painted the first layer of paint. So I'm going to see if it needs any more sanding. I'm going to blow it off real good, get some tack cloth, get everything, all the dust off it. And then we're going to hang it up and then we're going to spray and go for another round of gloss black. Fingers crossed. Hope that goes well and we will see you a little bit. All right.
right, round two on the black bass coats on the guitar neck for the Ninja Warrior 4 has been complete. And let me show you. Looks pretty good, but there's, I counted, there's six spots that I've got to address. Which is, this is a vast improvement from the first. Uh, I've noticed whenever you do the black, it's just the most difficult paint. And I was kind of in a hurry because... There's a person here that's paint sensitive, so there's a rush, and you know, it's just. I usually like to do this early in the morning when no one's around, and okay, but anyway, there's a little bit of a drip there you can't really see. In the heel there, there's like a little spot around the edge there, right where the light is shining. There was a little itty bitty spot. Uh, it's definitely curling up right there by the the upper tuning pegs which that's easy sand and then a little bit of a drip that was forming by the top tuning key and then right there there's some drip you know a little form but that's easily sandable so when this cures it's just gonna be just awesome so that's that is so fixable and I might just be able to touch spray since I'm going 2k over everything once I sand that spot, the six spots that I counted, then I can just either touch them up with a little bit of black spray or just go right 2K over it. I, I do believe that gloss black, when it's sanded, it may look flat, but when you put the clear over it, it'll look just like this, which is way better. So, all right, and that'll conclude today's progress on the Ninja Warrior number four guitar. But vast improvement, as you recall from the first time. The first paint was just horrible. So this is definitely getting better. It just takes some time. All right, we'll let this cure and we'll go for another round. All right, we'll see you in a little bit. All right, good afternoon, everybody. How's everybody doing? It's time to work on, continue work on the Ninja Warrior number four diamond plate guitar today. Um, it's got finished touching up all the paint on the Angel Plays and the third and final coat of colors on the Bart Simpson electric guitar. So. Now we're going to work on the uh, Ninja Warrior number four, like I said, and what, what I'm going to do today, I'm going to tape up the frets, individual frets, um, then I'm going to apply the inlay, I got some really cool inlays I'm going to show you, and then uh, once I get all that dialed in perfectly, then uh, we're going to go for some 2K clear coat. Uh, we'll see how that goes, I've got plenty of 2K in a box down here. Uh, the, the clear coats with the hardener and uh, sanded the neck again real good and I think it'll be fine when the 2k clear coat goes over it it's gonna any blemishes are just gonna disappear so let me get the neck out and start taping up the next uh, frets individually and we'll see you in a little bit after I start doing that all right got my individual frets all taped off looks pretty good all right so let me apply my special secret exciting logo that I, I ordered special for this guitar all right let's see a little bit all right successful 2k clear coat on the body and the neck of the uh ninja warrior number four electric guitar bill the diamond plate let's see if i can do this one hand hopefully fingers crossed it went very well oh yes Diamond inlays with the 2K clear coat over the top. Looks pretty good. I'm being very ginger, ginger with this because it turned out really well on the behind the neck. And yeah, it looks pretty killer. So we're going to let this set for about four days to let the uh, 2K fully cure. And then we're ready for assembly. Yeah, I didn't put too much on the front of the headstock because, you know, it's got the diamond plate at the back there. But yeah, the uh, the diamond inlays really turned out really awesome. I love that. That looks so cool. Reminiscent of James Hetfield's JH2 guitar. It's diamond plate guitar. That's what I took inspiration from. All right, and let me get the body and I'll be right back. And I'll All right, here's the body. And I'm trying to do the best I can. 2K clear coat. On the body, there was two minor, minor, insignificant little spots. As you can see, that little fleck right there. And there's one right there. But it's so insignificant. I Either I could, uh, when it fully cures, 
I could go through the sandpapers, start at about 1,500, work up 2,000, 3,000, 5,000, and then actually 7,000 grit, and then go through the, uh, you know, the polishing compounds. But I don't think it's really necessary. I think this, when this cures, it's actually going to, I'm just going to be able to take my finger and brush it off. It was like a small little hair that fell on the finish right when I was finishing. So I just wanted to show you how good it looks. Yeah, without getting to. <laughs> yeah, that is amazing. And all the imperfections are gone, except for those two minor little spots. As you can see, it's just so minor. But all right, this concludes work on this the uh, Ninja Warrior number four electric guitar build for today. And uh, like I said, I'm going to let this both the body and the neck settle uh, cure for four whole days. And then we're ready for assembly. So, all right. Hope everybody is having a good week. Good week so far. Um, and we will see you soon. All right. Take it easy. Good morning, everybody. Today is the day. It is that time. It's time to assemble the Ninja Warrior number four diamond plate electric guitar. Uh, I've been looking forward to this for the longest time. As you recall in a previous video, I did correct those two little spots and it looks amazing. I got all my parts, got all my equipment that I'm going to use. And we're going to put this thing together today and get a sound test and get everything good to go and perfect. Alright, so... It is uh, October 30th, 2022, and it's early. It's 7.30 in the morning, and we figured we'd start early today. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm stoked. It's The day is finally here. We get to put together this beast of a guitar. All right, so first thing he's going to do, if, as usual, I'm going to flip the guitar over, get my parts out, and then we're going to run the wire for the ground for the bridge, just through one of the posts, easy. And then run it back to the back cavity and then set the posts for the uh the bridge and that'll be fairly simplistic and easy um and we'll see when it gets to the next step all right we'll see in a bit all right real quick i did add some uh two-way tape and some tin foil just so none of the black showed through you know when i put the diamond plate material over the top i don't want any black i want it to be chrome so that's just a, you know, just a precautionary measure, just in case any black actually was visible through, in case there might be a small gap between anything. So, got that done. Uh, I cut my wire, so I'm going to install my ground wire real quick and break it. Alright, got the uh, stop and tail piece post installed. I've got the ground wire installed and pulled through the back cavity, sorry. Um, and we are good to go. Alright, the next step is to get the, uh, the pick guard, or the, uh, the metal plate, diamond plate, get that uh, pickup installed and everything like that and then feed the wire through and then get that mounted to the front of the body <laughs> really exciting part right off the bat so yeah uneventful so far it's going to be a fairly simple installation or uh, assembly so all right we'll see when to get that done all right see you in a bit. all right i've moved the body to the other room and i've got out i've made this tester for uh I concocted this a while ago, just kind of idea came to my head. I needed a way to test the, test the EMG active pickups without actually putting them in the guitar and then mounting it. I've had that happen where you get everything set up and in this case, I mean, it's gonna, you know, you just can't pop out. You have to take off the whole plate to get to the EMG pickup. So I wanted to develop a way how to test it. So I wired this in and created this, like I said, last year. And it's actually pretty cool. Got a nine volt battery. Got a string here, got a little bridge piece, and then I got a connector for the active pickup. And then what I'll do is I'll connect the pickup, and then I'll stick the pickup under here, and then I'll see how the pickup registers on all sides, so if it's good to go. And if it's a dud, because I've gotten dud EMG pickups, believe it or not. I mean, even figure EMG would catch stuff like that, but I've actually got a dud, had it in the guitar, and then it just, yeah, just did it. Anyway. All right, so let me get this set up and I'll be right back. All right, got the pickup uh, installed and let me just show you. And see, I haven't ran the ground. I mean, I did this really good. You got the volume and everything, volume now. So I got the pickup hooked up and I got the string. And I got it hooked up to my amp over there, of course. And you can see 
it is registering good. So this is a good EMG pickup. And then you could also do the uh, tap test. And we are good to go. So that way when I install it and get all the screws in and it's a big old long process, I know that the EMG is good. And if something else is going on where it's not registering, then it's a wiring problem that I'll fix. So this just makes sure ahead of time. All right, we'll see you in a little bit. All right, got the EMG installed in the diamond plate facing, and I made sure I taped it in there really, really well. So it looks pretty cool. All right, so let me get the body back out here, and then I'll fish the wire through, and then we'll put the screws in, and we'll get that going. All right, we'll see you in a little bit. All right, successful mating to the diamond plate material to the body. But that's first time since they've been painted. And we are good to go. That looks wicked. That looks badass. All right, so let me get some screws and mount and make sure there's no binding in the uh, input. Or the, uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, the pickup wire and make sure there's no binding and everything is good to go so all right let me put some screws in here and we're back all right successfully mounting the diamond plate top and the pickup on the body it went very well uneventful all the screws went in perfectly it matched up correctly all the work i did ahead of time certainly pays off <laughs> i always say i'll make sure before you get to this step you're always prepped and always have it so all right so next step i'm gonna do i'm gonna get the input jack and I'm going to get that wired up with the proper hot active uh, input and get that wired and then fed through and then we can flip it over and start wiring everything together. All right, we'll see in a little bit. <laughs> so cool. All right, input jack su successfully installed and the wires pulled through. I soldered it and pushed it through. Now I'm going to do the 9 volt battery compartment and get that installed into the body and pull the wires through. Fingers crossed on that one, so hopefully all the planning did well. All right, let's see when we can get that done. All right, successful install of the 9 volt battery compartment. And I pulled the wires through, so we got plenty of wire to work with. We are good to go. So, all right, let me get the uh, volume and the tone going. And then we're ready to wire it up. Now I'm going to use the standard wiring for this, just uh, volume and a tone and the tone has the capacitor on it and that'll be it all right we'll see when i start working on that a little bit more i right, see you in a little bit all right successful wiring if you want to see the wiring you go online for one tone or one tone one volume and one hot active pickup so all right i feel pretty confident in my wiring so i'm going to go ahead and install the pedometers into the body and we'll see when that's done all right see you in a bit uh, all right, got the wiring complete. I fed through the pedometers, the volume, and the tone through the other side. Let me show you that real quick. All right, looks pretty good. Got a boom. All right, um, I feel pretty confident on this one, but you never know. But I'm gonna go ahead and install the back cover plate anyway, and then we'll flip it over and we'll do a full test. All right, let's see in a minute. Installed the back cover plate looks pretty good and I did originally plan to go with black screws on both but I thought the chrome screws would actually add to the overall aesthetic because it kind of goes with that theme the black and chrome all right so we got it all wired fingers crossed everything is good batteries installed we got a hot active lead so I can do this one hand probably not we set the phone down for one second All right, we are installed. We don't hear any weird humming and buzzing. That's always a good thing. <laughs> Let's turn the volume all the way down. Volume's down. Tone's all the way down. Get something to tap with. Get a pointer. All right, so. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> oh, no, that's not good. We shouldn't be, oh, the volume's all the way up, actually. Duh, whoo! Volume was all the way up, so. All right, we always start. There we go. The volume all the way down. We're good to go. Volume all the way up. We're getting really hot. Tone. Yeah, definitely brighten the tone. Yeah, see how it got a little deader? And then when we got the tone. All right, successful wiring. Woohoo! <laughs> it's always a good thing. 
Uh, that's always an awesome, awesome thing to do. All right. So let me uh, hang this on the hanger and we'll start working on the neck. Let me put the knobs on and I'll be right back. All right, knobs are put on successfully. And I got the other bridge parts. I just didn't install them because they'll, they'll fall off. When you, not, they're not locking pieces. So, All right, so let's go hang this back on the rack and then get the uh, the neck out and then get all the stuff. And um, install the tuning keys on the neck or the headstock and then install the chrome um, diamond plate and we'll be right back. All right, got the neck out and get ready to install tuning keys and also the diamond plate with the headstock logo on there. And all right, we'll get that going and we'll see you in a little bit. And I love that diamond inlay, that is so killer. All right, I'll see you when I get a little bit done. All right, successful install of the diamond plate. Uh, upper layer of the uh, diamond plate on the headstock and the tuning keys and it looks pretty awesome and I took off the hanger and as customer we're gonna lay this right here I also cleaned up everything non-essential well mostly everything all right so let me clean up everything else get the body back out here and we'll get them back we get them together and see how this goes all right we'll see in a little bit all right, got the body off the hanger, got the neck, and we're gonna get these two together and see what happens. <laughs> Fingers crossed, we'll see in a little bit. All right, just wanted to show you a tradition. I wasn't gonna do this this time, but I just figured it's tradition. I don't wanna jinx the build, so. All right, side by side, here we go. Let's get them together, we'll see in a little bit. All right, the neck and the body are one. Whew, that was kind of stressful. It's always a little bit stressful. Uh, we say on the builds, that part right there is somewhat stressful because you just never know if the paint's gonna chip but everything went good I had to file a little bit on the metal on this side but it did go and it went good and it looks like it's lined up all right so next step is to actually put my two e-strings on here and make sure all the measurements and everything are lined up and then uh, put the strap buttons on and then get all the strings together and then start insinating tuning and making sure it plays amazing like it did and hopefully with that emg 81 and the bridge there it'll, it'll sound awesome i love those diamond inlays <laughs> this is so cool uh that's the my favorite part because it uh when it all comes together your vision all right all right we'll see me uh, get some light going and we'll see you a little bit just a quick update I've got both these strings on and it looks like my measurements are lined up right in the center and we're still good on the neck pocket neck pocket is pretty good actually I didn't shim it at first but then I had to take my shim out because we are too high I thought I was gonna need a little bit of a shim but I was wrong so that's a good thing and I think we still got plenty of room intonation wise so let me get the rest of the strings on there and we'll be right back all right, that's one to show you. Just got the strings on it. <laughs> it's looking amazing. I just wanted to do the initial kind of setup and kind of assessment and adjust. And I just want to show you exactly my process. But yeah, that is looking sweet. That is so killer. And then uh, pickup sounds awesome. Let me see if I can get the camera where I need it to be. Yeah, it's kind of a one take kind of deal. So I just uh, want to show you my process as far as, you know, getting the strings on there. So pardon me if I just ignore the camera and do my thing, but, uh, wow. super fast it's uh the painting you know i painted the neck and uh it turned out really cool and it's got the 2k clear coat on there and it's it's lightning fast i mean it, it's got no drag at all um you recall that i put some uh you know i always use the lemon oil so i've got some lemon oil on my hands but let me see how it is as far as intonated i remember i i kind of intonated it when it was first when i was first putting it together but and I 
sometimes they cut the nut definitely because it's got usually do on the third fret and usually you know you see it's kind of so it's got room to cut the, cut the nut perfectly so that way you know I, when I cut the slots I can dial it in let's see how close we are brand new string so and I always use uh, 10 to 52s Like I said on the earlier video, I thought I was going to need to shim, but I didn't shim the neck at all. So, I mean, it's it's right in the pocket. And I'll do like a full photo shoot and a video demonstration and a full, you know, up close and personal video. But let me, uh, let me just work it and see how we're doing. As far as action, we're right in the ballpark. We're right good. And we got plenty of room on the bridge, the saddle, you know, the bridge post to go up and down. <laughs> right in there as far as action. Let me see how we are intonate wise. Right on. Sounds like it's a hair sharp, but it says it's dead on. Um, wish I could have a camera and show you what I'm looking at. But it's, it says dead on. It sounds a, a, a scent a little sharp. D is in tune. It says a little flat, so let me adjust for that. So I bring the saddle closer to the bridge. What you do is you hit the open E, or open G in this case, and then you tune it to pitch 440 or whatever. Usually a little bit sharp of 440 is what I use because that's with Metallica and I don't play a lot of Metallica. So this isn't actually 440, this is just a couple cents sharp of that. And right now G is in tune, then you go to the 12th fret, and you hit the button, and you hit the note. And it's a little sharp, so I gotta send the saddle back that way. too sharp but a little bit sharp. And you retune it again. Dead on. You can go to your B string. Tune it to pitch. Hit the 12th fret. Dead on. E string. Tune it to pitch. 12th fret. Dead on. So let me tune all the strings again. Just, you know, stretches a little bit. Brand new strings. You always gotta stretch them out. And I, I adjusted the neck as far as I always go through like three stages of tightness. When I put the strings on, I tighten them, tighten you know just past hand tight, and then you wait a little while and then you do it again. You do it a total of three times to because sometimes it'll move or shift or adjust. So let me get it completely in tune. So we're in tune, so we need to open the chord. Perfectly intonated. You can hear it too, like when you hit a chord, hit the E there, hit the E open.
Wow. That, that EMG sounds killer. I mean, this... <clears throat> stretching but I'll dial it in more when you know I get it all going and let everything stretch but that's awesome let me check the uh, truss rod adjustment because you know when to do all the fret work I adjust for the truss rod sorry I always Van Halen but at least I don't use metal picks in my mouth uh, let me get a appropriate Allen key right there let me take a look at what I got because I'm old I need my reading glasses and let's check the uh, Check the neck and see how if, uh, where the neck is at. And you got two sides to your straight edge, so you just want to make sure. Alright. Definitely got a little front, a little bit of need adjustment. It's uh, kind of like in a banana shape. Not banana shape, but it's it's a little bit, I don't know what, what they call that as far as... Oh, wrong Allen key. <laughs> But uh, I just need to tighten the neck, tighten it so I straighten it. So I got to put some tension on it. Okay, that's the proper Allen, but it's a little short. So pardon me if this is just like a one take deal. I might edit this out, but or edit and find the proper Allen key. I'm so prepared for this video. Let's see. Got so many Allen keys up here. There we go. I think that should be a good one. better but we can still go more and I'll probably edit all this out so that way you're not seeing me fumble with the string tension on it whatsoever so it's kind of right in that spot Get it right to that spot and usually most of these these necks are the uh, double double action neck truss rod so you can actually adjust both ways Then I'll be right back. Alright, finally got it. I just had to maneuver the string around it. So let me go tune it back up. Strings of stretch. Make sure my neck is still staying true, which it look like looks like it is. It's not shifting. But I always put a screwdriver on it. Okay, so let me do that. This will be the fourth tension test. Let me show you what I mean. Just wanna turn it just to make sure that it's tight, nothing has moved. All the four bolts and we are good to go. Alright, nothing moved at all, so we're good. So this is how I and I got the pickup. Um I took, you know, the screwdriver and I brought it out to where it needed to be. As 
far as tuning, I always back it out and then go to the tuning. <laughs> string tuner is a little a little wonky And I'll swing around the camera to show you on the nut what I mean as far as you know, you want it a certain depth away from the actual strings, and it's just a tad high, but when you adjust for that, it just plays so much better. But yeah, just wanted to show you the quick assessment, and uh, as you can hear, that, that EMG is a Super lightning fast because I got that little bit of lemon oil with the uh, the 2k clear coat and there's no drag at all and I did just the truss rod just a hair a little tight that because you could hear that But for just being set up, just, you know, straight from the get, I mean, it sounds, and it, it feels awesome. Let alone, it looks just super killer. Oh, let me show you the tone, tonal quality. That's the tone fully engaged, or off, and this the tone fully. do the you know I let it set for a little while and then I'll definitely have to cut the nut um, just the you know the slots in the nut to dial it in as far as the action but I'll do a full video demonstration sound demonstration but yeah I'm I'm, I'm very happy very satisfied it uh, it turned out really good. And see, I got the, uh, wow, that is just killer. All right, let me uh, put on the strap buttons, and that'll be the next step, and we'll see when that's done. All right, we'll see in a little bit. Wow, come on, hit the button. All right, installed the strap buttons. There we go. And I installed the truss rod cover, so we are good to go. Let me plug it back in, tune it up. Give you a quick sound demonstration again. Probably gonna have to retune it. Oh.
stretching but wow that is just killer and it feels good I might put a fine sand on the 2k just around the edges just to make it really super smooth but yeah it turned out awesome and let me uh, let me show you again real quick the body well, I got the camera set up that way let's see all those imperfections in the finish I worked out and I sanded and then, you know there's tiny tiny little bit of orange peel you can see in the finish I mean if I were to sand the whole body and I would have had the whole professional buffing and everything like that it could make it perfect but for, for what I have doing it by hand I mean I think it turned out really good let's see the sides but yeah all right so we'll hang this on the hanger and we'll let it set for a day or two and then uh, We'll fine tune it and get everything perfectly. And like I said, I'll do a full photo shoot. I'll do a full sound demonstration. But yeah, that is just, that is awesome. And I love the way the inlay turned out. I was a little scared about putting the 2K on the front of the neck. I've done it once or twice before and it didn't turn out 100% perfect. Um, there are a few pores here and there, but overall, I mean, you really can't tell. Um, just me being nitpicking and just fine. But yeah, the bridge turned out really well, and it's dead on straight intonated. So there you go. Made out of plywood, uh, diamond plate Ninja Warrior number four is complete. All right, and we will see you in a little bit. Let me get everything cleaned up, and we'll see you in a little while.
Good morning, everybody. Happy Halloween. October 31st, 2022. I figure I dialed in the nut slots and dialed in all the intonation, and I figure I'd do a practice. And uh, I always uh, play through albums like you had seen in earlier videos, so I thought I'd do it in one take with this awesome guitar. And uh, do maybe some Metallica and Justice for All from start to finish the whole album with this awesome guitar, like I said. I'm trying to get the camera angle just right. So, how about we do some Injustice for All? So, happy Halloween, everybody, again, and we will see you on the other side. <laughs> Thank you. 
a good one to warm up your fingers on for sure. You play everything distorted.
Pro Metallica. Man, I was 18 years old. That was awesome. profile. The neck profile is almost like a C shape. I remember when I was first uh, building the neck and building the guitar itself, I was thinking I was going to do a thinner neck, but I, I'm, the neck turned out really, really good. I mean, it's like, like I said, it's almost like a C shape, so it's really thin and it's really fast. It's just awesome. So, thanks for watching me practice.
Like I said, I'm gonna keep, you know, just keep it distorted the whole, you know, I'll mute a lot of the uh, the cleaner parts, but yeah, I just wanted to do just one take, so this will sound a little weird, but it might sound a little cool, so. <laughs>
damn, that pick absolutely sucked. <laughs>
so I don't know much actually cut out. So, uh...
at any time so I'm gonna go ahead and skip ahead in the album and actually go to Dire Z. Skip ahead to Dire Z that way just finish out with the practice on this album. So like I said my battery's gonna die any second now so if you know the album you know the two songs that I'd skip there the uh, the instrumental this one right here and the one before it and then they're pretty awesome songs too but I just wanted to hurry up and skip ahead right to Dire Z your mother and your father kind of thing. All right, here we go.
without the battery dying, so it's pretty cool. All right, thanks for watching, and successful sound test on the Ninja Warrior number four diamond plate. And we will see you soon for the full photo shoot and official up close and personal and the demo. But yeah, it's pretty killer. All right, we'll see you in a while.